Hello everyone and welcome to the Community Spotlight. We've got an, an edition for you today where we're just going to be playing games that have excellent music. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. We've got a good lineup of games for you all. We're starting off with Deltarune, and then we're going to have Celeste, VVV, VVV, Ori in the Blind Forest, Bastion, and Crypt of the Necrodancer. So just a big variety of like really good games with slapping music. It's, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. But before we hop into... Delta Rune, just a few quick announcements. Uh, if you're watching our VODs on YouTube and you'd like to support our live content, you can check us out at twitch.tv slash gdq. And if you are on Twitch and you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe with uh, Prime Gaming for free. So we'd lo love it if you appreciate using that on our channel because uh, it's your subscriptions and bits help fund the content that we put on on Hotfix. As a reminder, this weekend is West Coast Weekend, starting December 4th and running through December 6th, starting noon Pacific time every day, running to about midnight. It's going to be a lot of fun, just a good showcase of speedruns from people who are from or live currently on the West Coast of the United States. And of course, AGQ 2021 online is January 3rd through January 3rd. 10th schedule is out prize submissions are open until near the end of december so you can find links to do that at gamesdonequick.com and of course tune in tomorrow for random number generation it's a show hosted by sky bills where they uh, go over different games and their randomizers randomizer adjacent stuff like bingo and that sort of thing talk with the community sometimes they have devs on it's a really good time if you've never seen it before it starts at 7 30 p.m eastern but we're starting off with Delta Rune. We've got Blupa here and Ivandar to help commentate. How are you both doing today? Great. I'm as great as stressed. <laughs> <laughs> and for people, no, who I'm fine. For people who are curious about the black screen, uh, Blupa is just waiting until we're about ready to start, and then it's going to start the game. Just because I have to restart the game shortly before we start the run. So we know there's a black screen. It's not a problem. We're going to be fixing it right as we're getting ready to get started. <laughs> Everything's um, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can explain why this is a thing. Um, yeah, yeah, go for it. So uh, Toby Fox, the, the developer, uh, noticed that in the, de the Undertale speedrunning, uh, players were skipping text by mashing their keyboard. And after some time, this might be a bit, a bit painful. So he decided to put an item in the game that skips the text for you. It's called the wrist protector. And it doesn't show up if you're not a speedrunner. So actually, uh, the game checks for how long you've been playing the game before uh, reaching a certain point. So if we wait with the game open before starting the, the, the run, uh, then it will say that we waited a long time and the, the item will not spawn. So we have to restart the game and then start a a new, a new game right away, so we can have the item. Uh, yeah, and the idea is that it's not the moment you uh, start a new game, it's the moment you open the game. So if you stay yes. in the menu for something like five minutes, and then you you go for it, you might still do, uh, like, reach the item in a really short amount of time, but that will be too much still and show up. So that's why we can't just risk, um, I would say, opening the game too early because else, well, that pretty much ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yes, uh, uh, Blooper and I are uh, like the, the baguette part of the community. <laughs> because <laughs> we are between friendships here and uh, we are really happy to, 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 to share this with uh, the whole community. I, I saw that many runners are in the chat right now. And yeah. And I hope also that the majority of people will discover a new speedrun that they will like. Yeah, yeah so hopefully. If people haven't seen the Deltarune speedrun before, what, what's like the quick pitch you'd give on what we're about to see for this run? Uh, um, <laughs> that's not an easy question. <laughs> well, I, actually, what will you see? Uh, you will see explosions. Uh, you will see uh, people running to the left, uh, to the right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> always to the um, right. Yeah, always. Uh, you will see, uh, you will hear some fine musics. Uh, we have an Easter egg for you, by the way. Uh, but we'll Shh. talk about this later. Yeah, I said there is one. It's just to make sure people stay in here. <laughs> because now there's hype. Um, and yeah, there are some, some fights. Uh, some skips also. We have skips. We have a lot of skips. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, if I don't mess it up, you will like not see so many fights, but you will see big ones. 
Uh, but yeah, mainly good music and explosions and uh, text not that you will not be able to read. <laughs> and yeah, as Teddy said, hopefully no milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, I think that's we are ready. Yeah, I'm ready yeah, when you are. So. Okay, so let me just launch the game. Yeah, give me a countdown when you're all set. Yeah. I will, if you don't mind, Blooper. No, no, it sounds good to me. I definitely go for it. Okay. Uh, tell me when you're ready with your sticky keys. Should be good. All right. Well, let's start in three, two, one, go. Nice. Okay, that sticky keys worked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the sticky keys, uh, to make it short, is a functionality of Windows that en enables us to hold down Shift and Control without actually holding them physically, uh, because we need to do so during the whole run. So this first part is a part of the game where you create a character. So you can you can customize it. Of course, we are choosing the first option every time. Um, the game is in Japanese because, uh, as in just like in many speedruns, uh, Japanese is one of the fastest languages because it has less characters than English, for example, so the text will be faster. Here we gave a name to our character and it just said that it was erased because in this game you don't have to choose. The game chooses for you. So this is a good thing that our character was not really good looking. <laughs> <laughs> had no face. We actually don't care that much. <laughs> And here is Toriel. You might uh, recognize her from Undertale. Uh, she's not exactly the same character uh, because it's Deltarune. Here we just skipped a big cinematic by going back into bed to skip school. Uh, it works in real life, but don't do that. <laughs> and here, Blooper just picked up the wrist protector that we talked about before. So now she can skip text automatically. But the problem is that uh, if we mash uh, our keyboard, uh, it still mash, uh, it still skips text faster, so we will still do this. <laughs> Sorry, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea. Please do that for Undertale as well. <laughs> okay, here is some uh, pretty precise movement because uh, if we just even if we slide along the walls, it will slow us down. So Blooper really has to stay away from those walls. Here is a little puzzle uh, that is not random. So there are little slides like this one, oh. and uh, the goal for us is to enter them pixel perfect. Uh, pixels are pretty big in Deltarune, but if we manage to enter the slide pixel perfect, we can keep our momentum, and we don't have to build it again by running. Here is the third slide. Oh, and Lupe just did it. She didn't lose any speed. So we just met Susie, which is the pink character and we just saw a strange character that is actually called Lancer and we will see both of those characters during the whole game. This is a Bellatel, uh, it's a bit RNG but most of the time it's not so bad and we can just uh, we can avoid the spikes uh, by holding right and just going up or down so we don't have to slow down. And this is another Bellatel, it's an auto-scroller, so we just have to avoid the, the spikes. And again, this is RNG, but most of the time it's it's really... Oh, it's really oh, easy, but... That was close. <laughs> yes, at the end, sometimes <laughs> weird stuff happens and we can get hit. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, okay, there is much lore in this game, but it will be in Japanese and really fast. So if you want to read this... Uh, you should play the game yourself. <laughs> yeah, especially if you haven't played it yet. Yes. At least we, you are not spoiled. Yeah, that's a good thing. An explosion. <laughs> so the explosion Blooper was talking about. So this is the Lancer fight. This fight is uh, really, really important. Uh, we want to do two things in this fight. Uh, the first is to get Susie hit. Uh, so, so Blooper just did it. Uh, Lancer attacks one of our characters randomly, so it's a, it's a bit RNG, but most of the time she will get hit. Oh, and, oh no. no! That's okay. so sad. <laughs> this is sad. Uh, <laughs> the goal is uh, to land a critical hit on every round, and if we do it three times in a row, it will end the, the fight. 
But if we, that, if we miss at least one crit, then it's four turn and we lose like six to seven seconds. So yes, we want to avoid that. And sadly, and yeah, we... uh, Blue Pugger lost the, the crit uh, on the last attack. Missing the last one is really sad. Yes. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> so here we skip a little tutorial because we know how to play the game. I see that you've been joined and... by a plushie. Oh yes. So you might recognize uh, the, the 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 plushie on Blue Scam. Because he's just on the screen right now. It's Ralsei. It is this character. Yeah, and now we have our sense. first skip. So unlike uh, Undertale, uh, some enemies uh, are roaming in the in the world, and when they see us, they they try to to run to us. And if we touch them, it will start a fight, and we want to avoid them. So you just saw three skips that are. Not that easy, but uh, sometimes some of them can be pretty tricky. But Blooper just did all of them pretty nicely. Here we had a puzzle. Uh, so we have many puzzles in the game, but they are never RNG. Okay, this fight we can't avoid. Uh, so Blooper got hit because it skips uh, a dialogue. It, it, it was not an accident, don't worry. And also, we can see that she's trying to get close to the to the enemy attacks. Uh, this is not for nothing. Uh, so you saw this kind of uh, white line around her heart. Um, this white line means that we are grazing. It's got grazing. Uh, the closer we are, I mean, if we get close to the attacks, it will restore our TP, which is some kind of mana, and uh, we can use it to to cast spells and do actions, but. Mostly, it will make the, the fights uh, shorter. So we want to do that, of course. Basically, the more you graze and the shorter the turn for the enemy will be. So we are aiming to like graze as much as we can. This is a puzzle that is not that easy, but uh, like the movement is pretty precise, but the budget is pretty quickly. This enemy, we can just hit him once and he will fl fly away. And we have our second uh, script fight that we can't avoid. So, I just see that in the chat, people are asking if it's a RPG Maker game. No, it's it's a Game Maker game. It's not a RPG Maker. You see, I had no idea. So yes, for this scripted fight, we want to hit the, to attack the two first enemies, and the last one, Susie, will do it for us. So we can just defend them. She will just do it. All right, and now we have uh, a box puzzle. So we want to push the boxes uh, to the targets. There is a little skip that can be oh, done here, but it's really precise. On. You have to push one box and push the other before the first one reaches the end of. Uh, of uh, its slide, and it's, uh, it skips a dialogue, but it's pretty hard and it only saves 0.3 seconds, and <laughs> and this was a not so easy skip. Perfect. These rooms are pretty tricky because you need to have really precise trajectories. Uh, for example, here if you bump more than, tw than, than once, uh, the enemy will reach you and it will start a fight, and Blooper managed to bump only once. So that is nice. And you saw rooms where the floor was turning white. Uh, if you step on the white floor, it will teleport you back to the start of the room. So we want to avoid that. Okay, and now Lenser is a bit like Papyrus in other sale for those who know. Uh, he's putting traps in our way and he's playing with us. But he's but nice will... still. Yes, he's nice. We will see why in the future. <laughs> Another room where trajectory is really important. This one is more permissive. You can you can bump more than twice and still get it. And Blooper only bumped once, so it's even better. It's fine. And now, now is a really important part of the speedrun. So this is the part where RNG really matters. So this little uh, this little round that we that we threw away uh, in a fight before. He just got the crown and upgraded. And we want him to to lose his crown. So we're gonna try to 
Um, I forgot the word, Blue Boo. <laughs> so we want like him to... Bow? Yeah, yeah, bow. We want him to bow, so so his crown can fall down. But also we want something in this fight. We want him to to, to attack Suzy. And that did the, not happen. Again, oh yes, again the pink character we have. Because she's attacking him every turn. And we can't do anything about it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> if she gets attacked in the first two rounds, we can get her down. Because we got her, we got her hits before. And um, if she gets down, we can save five seconds. Or to see... Uh, Okay, five to ten seconds, um, because she will not attack him. The the idea is that when the um, the enemy is being attacked, uh, he, he will like restore his life, and we don't attack him without Susie. And Susie, we can't control her action for the moment. So because she's not really part it. of our team right now. Exactly, like. Uh, as the text says at the moment, she she stays, but at distance. Because she doesn't want to be like recognized being one of uh, one of the team. So Blooper just did, and she did the second. She did. She just did two. Wow! Well, she just did two quick skips. Uh, so those bunnies come out of the of the bushes. But we, if we go back as soon as they spawn, uh, they will just they will just. Uh, oh no! Away. Okay, this this is a puzzle that is not random again. Uh, Blooper accidentally pressed twice the same button, but it's okay. It's fine still. Here we have a little enemy, a red, red enemy that you just saw. Uh, those are Bloxers. This one was really easy to skip, but there will be some later that will be way harder. And another script fight. Okay, this one is pretty fun because when we skipped the... the the tutorial, Railsay gave us a manual oh. like to explain what to do. Oh, oh no. And if we give the manual to this enemy, he will be happy and he will stop fighting us. Okay, and now is one of the hardest skips in the game. So it might not look like it, but this one is really precise. Oh, and Blooper did it. Nice. So those enemies can see us from pretty far away, and if they see us, we have absolutely no way to to escape them. So we have to take a really precise path to avoid them, and Blooper just did it extremely, extremely well. Yeah, okay, like, and I now is the moment you are all of... waiting for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I was about uh, to say it was not that good, but yeah, that's the best moment of the run. I mean, you did it. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure I was. So here we have to create oh, a machine. Yeah machine that will, uh, as they say, trash our own ass. Uh, they will actually not do that, but we can create whatever we want, so we created a duck. <laughs> it's really important to do that. It doesn't save time, but... It's, it's a must. The, the duck validates <laughs> the run, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. If it's you in a marathon... <laughs> <laughs> uh, in this room, there is a hidden button, but we know where it is, so we can just press it. Okay, here is a maze. Um, so we see Lancer and Susie uh, running in this maze, but uh, they, all, they are always taking the wrong path, so we, we want to go the, uh, the opposite way every time. Uh, this is not random again. And here is the second Bloxer skip. So this one is uh, actually harder if you manage to do the first one. And because Blooper managed to do it, uh, this one was really quick. To, to chase us, but uh, we can still block him on the wall and, and run away. And now... <laughs> the Before your eyes, the duck. And they just blew it up, so we are going to fight them, of course. Okay, so this fight is a, a bit interesting, so Lancer and Suzy are teaming up against us. But Lancer is actually too nice to, to fight us, so we will compliment him until he doesn't want to fight anymore. But if Suzy is awake, then she will tell him not to... To, um... to listen to us. Yes, exactly. So we want to compliment him twice, then put Suzy to sleep, and then compliment him twice again, 
and then because he will be sleeping, uh, he will be the only one left, and he will uh, accept not fighting us. Okay, uh, everything went really well during this round for the moment. This is a nice, a nice pace. Yeah, for the moment there were just a few stumbles, but that's really fine. Okay, now we are entering the boring split, as we like to call him. <laughs> uh, in this split, it's mostly dialogue. So, okay, I'm scared of what I'm going to ask, but if the chat has any questions for Blooper, uh, you can write them and I will ask her. That's the moment. <laughs> I will probably not be able to, to read everything. <laughs> and Yang, and yes, uh, as we said, joins. yes, Lancer, j oh, he, he joined a bit earlier. The, yeah, the, the candy just joined. <laughs> and the candy joined as well, yes. yes. <laughs> but as you can see, Lancer joins, but still at distance. <laughs> <laughs> when is Delta Rune 2? Uh... <laughs> Wish we'd knew. <laughs> yes. Toby said before uh, 2026. Oh, someone is asking where you, you got that plushie. Fangamers.com. <laughs> right. Okay, and here is a, a bulletin that is a bit harder than the first one, actually way harder than the first one, because the, pro the projectiles are coming sideways in diagonal, so it, they are way harder to avoid. Someone is asking, Blooper, what was your favorite part of the game to play casual? Oh, I'm gonna be frankly honest, it's been so long. Mm. <laughs> like I really enjoyed <laughs> the whole game. I think what I loved the most was the the fighting system and the way it evolved from Undertale because it's way more. You know, you have way more things to do, way more possibilities, and it was. I think would be the the best thing I remembered from the game back then. Okay. Yes. Just sorry. Just a little thing to say here. So we we had to check three objects in the in the prison prison cell to escape. I mean, to continue uh, playing, and we picked up some chains, and we will use them later. So, okay, there are many questions. Uh, what was your favorite game to speedrun, Blooper? Uh, well, basically, I speedrun only two games, so for the moment, I would have to say Delta Rune. Ah, yeah. uh, nice. <laughs> like, maybe that will change at some point when I will, like, you know, be better at the other games, but so far, it's Delta Rune. Someone asked if you played, if you also speedrun uh, Undertale, and um, I, I think I'm, that I'm not wrong if I said not yet. Not yet. It's a plan. <laughs> I, I plan on running the the neutral glitchless, uh, but the thing is mashing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we that's have to mash during one hour. Yeah, it is painful. Yeah, even even more. It's uh, it's mostly like when you are, I would say, a Mid good runner, it's something like uh, one hour and a half, and it's really a lot. Just keep mashing for so long. Okay, here is a fight that is also pretty important. Uh, this is the Suzy is Lancer fight. We don't have many freedom here because Suzy is just attacking him and he's just like, attacking her. But as we said, uh, the more you graze, the quicker the fight is. So we want to graze as much as we can. And, and the, the, the goal is yes, you got 75. <laughs> And the goal is that at the end of the fight we can reach 100% of TP, so of mana. And uh, it seems that Boop uh, will have it because she just got 75% at the end of the third attack. Okay, the so way. sorry everyone, I can't read every question. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, by the way, uh, this part of the fight you have nothing to do, so it's the perfect time to drink. So please yes. be sure to stay hydrated, as I just did. <laughs> I will do. Yeah, that's your time as well. Okay. Um, so the idea is um, that Susie decided like not to uh, kill Lancer because they had a nice discussion around friendship and everything. Uh, so she just left him be and She's gonna like, you know, free the other people and we're gonna go. And as I said earlier, we have a kind of an Easter egg for you. Because, you know, Toby has a patient around elevators. 
but elevators are boring and we can change the music. So hopefully that's for you. Evandar, are you okay? <laughs> Evandar? Okay, that's odd. We might have lost Evandar, or maybe he's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the afraid. Music. So I know, yeah, I know he has some network issues at some point. So maybe that's it. I'm just gonna go. So we just got off. Oh my god. So basically, there are more skips, which are pretty precise, and I was about to miss this one. So you have the, I would say, the super advanced way of doing it and the normal way of doing it. I just went for the normal way of doing it. And here we have a puzzle, which is pretty hard. Like, one of the hardest in the game. Okay, went well. So, and then comes, I would say, the hardest skip of the, of the whole run, which is really precise. So I'm gonna do my best. Oh my god, I got it! Okay, so I wasn't ready for this. I would say it's the very first time, like, that I have it during a run. So I really wasn't prepared for this. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm speechless right, right now, to be honest. <laughs> Chat, <laughs> Chat is very excited for you. Well, thank you! <laughs> so, I just went to the shop. I'm buying a new axe uh, for Susie that is making way more damage. And I just equipped it. And then we meet again. The K round, which we met earlier. And we still want to remove the crown out of his head. But instead of bowing, we're just gonna throw Rousey at, at them. So we need to do that for three turns. And then the crown is gone and is back to normal. Yeah, so here is just like a security save, I would say, just to be sure everything's fine. And now is already the last boss. So basically, if you like, I, I don't know, because we say we would not really talk about the lore. So I, I think I'm just going to go not explaining the story. But we have different strategies for the boss. Uh, the idea is uh, either you can go full defense or attack. I'm going to attack. And I'm sorry, because I, I will be like not speaking that much because I need to, to focus a little bit. So I'm sorry about this. That's fine. This is the good music edition, so we can just, you know, Yeah, exactly. Music. Like, by the way, those who played the game might have noticed, but yeah, I changed the music of the of the boss fight. But it's still a music from the game. It's the, the music of the the hidden boss. Welcome back, Ivan Dark. Like, I'm sorry. Hey. Uh, apparently, my execution crashed. I'm really sorry. Okay. I it's okay. okay. Like, I got the HH, Ivan Dark. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, 
Okay, so what turn are you on? I, I just have no idea. <laughs> okay. So Rupert maybe tried to explain it, well, maybe he, she's too focused for that, but uh, here we want to complete the game, to complete the boss in uh, at least like no more than 11 turns. So we can do either 10 or 11 turns. Um, both of those, uh, of those possibilities save time over just defending during the whole run. So, um, so yes, this is, this is something that is a bit frustrating sometimes. Um, if you defend during the whole run, so if you don't do anything, the fight will end in 15 turns because the fight, the king is too, is too tired to, okay. um, to 11 fight. Turns. 11 turn, nice. Yeah. Do you think that this is a PB, Looper? I don't think so because I went for the dock. Oh no, this I think is because I went for the duck, I'm not gonna have a PB. This is definitely a PB because the duck didn't didn't take thirty seconds. No, but no, but you know, I had a stumble on the Okay. This is maybe a PB. But I, I'm yet, not sure. Um, I'm not sure. If you defend well, during fifteen turns, um, it will actually only make you lose ten seconds compared to doing a fast uh, strat or so a hard strat. So it's not really worth it to to do the defense strat until you are aiming for very good times. But obviously, Blooper is aiming for very good times, and you saw her doing the hardest skip in the game. I did not. <laughs> I, I am a bit jealous. <laughs> I, I still can't believe I did it. Like, as I said in the chat, it's that, the very first awesome. time I managed to, to have it during a run. <laughs> so it's. Just okay, and you, and you, I think that you, you passed a Redin Ranger skip, right? Yes, but I had to go like second turn because first time it, okay. I was too close to, to them. Yes, this is fine. Okay, so here the, the, the king just went to sleep, and there is a lot of dialogue. And, oh, okay, something is going to happen. Um, and Ralsei is actually a goat. It's a goat. And a cute it. one. <laughs> it's a cute one, it's a very cute goat. <laughs> we will probably see him back um, in, the, in the following chapters. Sadly, that's the only part of the game where we see him as a goat. I think. <laughs> Else run, we have no idea. <laughs> yes, we know the run, we know where to go in the run, but we don't know anything else in the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so and now it's we are going to leave. Uh, sorry? It's not going to be a PB. Uh, no, it's that, not by really much, but it's not going to be a PB. That's fine. That's, that's a really good run, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we are, exciting the... We are leaving the, the dark world uh, that we entered at the very beginning. And we are going in the light world. So in the real world, between quotes, we can't tell if the dark world is real or not. But this whole room actually looks like the dark world. We could see a checkerboard. We could see a forest that was a carpet. And yes, yeah, so this is a place that we actually uh, saw at the beginning if we were uh, playing with a fresh set, with a fresh file, mm -hmm. uh, but we skipped the the beginning, the cinematic. So this is the school, and we were here before going into the dark world. So now we are exciting the school, leaving the school, and we are going back to our house. Uh, so Chris is running way faster uh, in the light world than in the dark world. To be honest, I would really prefer if we were running at this speed in the dark world. Definitely. <laughs> And time is coming now. <sighs> so, Blooper, what is your, your time on this bit? It must be really 20, great. 27.59. 59. Okay, yeah. 27.59. That's a, a really good time. This is sub-28. Yeah. yeah. So this is pretty cool. And this is really close to your PB, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my PB is only 20 seconds less. Yes, it's 20 so seconds it's away. it's really, really impressive. Like I yes, mean, yes, Gigi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Like I, I, I'm still, I'm still sh shaking from having, <laughs> like, managing to get the hardest keep of the game, like first yeah, try, like this. This was like truly, <laughs> truly a good run. Yeah, I'm really sad that yeah, I yeah. See the VHH skip. <laughs> well, you will see the VOD, so it's fine. Yes, I will. <laughs> Well, thank you all for the GGs. 
Like, yeah, I, mean... I hope that, that, that you guys liked uh, this speedrun. This is a, a really, like, it's really easy to start speedrunning this game. And there are approximately, I think, 300 runs on speedrun.com, something like this. Yeah, something so you like won't this. be alone if you want to, to start running the game. Yeah, definitely. And it's really a good game if you want to start, because it's yes. not that hard, as you could have seen. There are some really tricky stuff, but it's you can really quickly uh, get a time which is really satisfying. And and the community is great. Like, uh, if you happen to be interested in the game, uh, you can definitely find our Discord. It's on speedrun.com. Uh, we are mostly friendly people. <laughs> mostly. Just kidding. Just kidding. We are all friendly. We are we're all, all friendly. We are all friendly, obviously. <laughs> was just kidding. So, yeah, if you, if you want to get started, like, yeah, just start playing. It's... Uh, it's really accessible. You can play on PC, PS4, and Switch. The game is free. I don't think we mentioned it, but it's a demo actually for the for the full game to be released. So definitely, if you want to give it a try, it's really easy for you to it's, find it's not a, a way. It's a demo. It's a long demo. It's a yeah, half an hour a, demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the first time, the, the first time you will play it casually, it's going to be obviously longer than twenty seven minutes. But. <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's a good point of entry to speedrunning if you want to, and uh, it's really fun to play. And yeah, feel free. <laughs> so I have uh, two important questions. Sure. Uh, where can people go if they want to get started on speedrunning this game? Uh, okay, so there are two places, two, two main places. Uh, the first one is speedrun.com, where there are many guides, and you can find resources like saves. And stuff like this, but there is a big guide uh, that will explain everything you need to know in the run. And also, we have a Discord server uh, where dedicated to Delta Run since like a week, <laughs> because before <laughs> we were on the same server as Undertale. But uh, Delta Run is is now a game by its, himself and itself, and the full game will be, of course, way bigger apparently than Undertale. So yeah, from what to be said, we have our and... server. Yeah, because now we are grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> and the second question is, where can people find you two? Uh, on the server. <laughs> <laughs> I can we're see on the server. We are, <laughs> we are also streaming our, our runs. We are doing races. Yeah. Uh, we are doing marathons like this one. Yeah. When if Like big marathons, quick marathons, many things like this. We have a marathon uh, Sunday coming in. Yeah, it's on Sunday. charity. So if you want to to find us there, you can you can uh, try to follow us on Twitch, uh, find our uh, find the Deterrent server, and you can meet us there. Yeah, definitely. We are on Twitch. We are on Discord. Uh, I myself, I'm on Twitter as well. If you want, uh, I know Evan is not that active on this one, so I won't no. I won't mention. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, definitely, uh, de definitely, you can find us there if you want to to follow us and yes yeah, evander said we we used to make a lot of races against the, against each other so if you pass to like if we are playing delta room most likely we'll be playing delta room together so so you can easily find us uh and during marathons and stuff all right well thank you so much for being on and showing this game for us and letting us vibe to the music uh, <laughs> well thank you for having us <laughs> And, uh, yes, we'll, it was, was a pleasure. Really yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah. We're, we're going to go to a quick break here while we get set up for the next run, which is going to be Celeste Benny Percent, uh, but run by Carrarium, and we're going to have Frozen Flygon joining for commentary. It's going to be a lot of fun. The one thing about the, the B Any Percent run is that you'll hear both the regular themes and the remix themes of every level because of having to go in and get the cassette tapes. So that's going to be a fun run, and as well, more good music for us all to... Uh, just sit back and relax too. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few minutes with that. Welcome back everyone to the community spotlight. We're continuing our excellent music edition, our cat jam edition, bopping music edition, whatever you want to call it. We're just playing games with great music. And uh, we've got two familiar faces. They've been on a few times recently, but when we started planning this show, we had to have Celeste. So we've got 
uh, Crarium and Frozen Flygon here. We're going to be doing uh, B any percent or Benny percent, whichever one you prefer. We might throw up a poll about that probably through the run. Yeah, we're, we're going to have like a conversation about this, I'm sure. <laughs> but the whole point of it is uh, we get to hear all of the tracks with the, the B any percent, I think, except, except for Farewell. But Yeah, that's... Farewell is not going to be involved. Sad, sad face, but it's fine. We'll hear, we'll hear most of the tracks. <laughs> we'll hear like 90% of the tracks. Yeah. 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 Benny percent is a really fun category uh, that I kind of picked up uh, a couple months back and just always find my way back to. And I just really enjoy uh, I just really enjoy it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The B sides are like just really awesome content and then optimizing them in terms of a speed run. Um, you're going to see some cool tech and strats that you don't typically see in a lot of Celeste runs. And it's going to be so much fun. And we get to listen to awesome music. Love it. All right. Let me know when uh, I can uh, pop on onto the mountain. Yeah, I'm ready whenever you are. Wonderful. Awesome. So uh, time will start when I click begin. Uh, so three, two, one, go. So one of the questions that I see already is what is Benny percent? <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's a good question to ask. Uh, Benny Percent is um, a category in which we are going to get to the epilogue of the game without completing any of the A-sides because there is a little oversight that was added to Celeste um, where if you complete the B-side uh, before completing the chapter's A-side, you still progress to the next. I'm going to go into every level. I'm going <laughs> to select the cassette. I'm going to return to map and I'm going to go into the chapter's B-side instead to progress to the next chapter. Yeah, and the reason why it's called, there's a separate category called all B-sides. This is different because we're starting from a fresh file. In all B-sides, you use the cheat code and just do the B-sides in isolation. And we also will not be going into core. So we don't have to worry about hearts. We truly are gonna snag the cassette, quit out and play the B-sides to completion. Exactly. So we're in the city and we're just gonna breeze right on through. Gonna jump over this chasm, skip on along. Yeah, any any pride bees? Let's go. Let's get, let's oh, get I some love pride, the pride bees, bees in chat. Yes. Yeah, it. We don't have to play Corby. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> it ends at summit. I just today was playing Corby to get the golden <laughs> berry, so I am actually very happy to not have to be in there again. <laughs> exactly. I I vastly prefer any percent to um all b-sides for that reason um and and the routing is really cool i like the cassette rooms are really fun and again it relates to the jamming music because the cassette music are really fun i've unlocked the b-side and goodbye city uh every cassette room has these like blue and pink uh rhythm blocks that uh bop together in a rhythm and the idea is to you know using that rhythm Mm -hmm. um try to get to the cassette and there's going to be a couple of really quick cassette rooms as well so this yeah, is the cassette rooms are awesome <laughs> this is 1b it uh every b side is approximately a reasonable amount harder than the a side so a lot of these screens are going to look a lot harder than what you see in 1a but we're not going to stress too much about it we're still going to just vibe on the way through yeah and, and you can hear the remixed pop. music I mean, yeah the, the as well, which is so are... good amazing so you know we we could gush about the music that uh lena rain wrote all day um, but the really cool thing about the b-side music is that she basically gave the music to all of her really good friends that are composers and you know got them to remix the music in their own style so each b-side has such a unique spin on it and i i think it's so it's Oops. so much fun and the um the cover art for the B-Sides album is Battlin', which is really cool. Um, Rats like double jump there to uh, just skip that top section. It saves a lot of time. It does. It's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> that is definitely sometimes a first time uh, or like a second time thing. Yeah. And definitely utilizing, you know, having two jump buttons makes that a little bit easier. Oh, um, for sure. I have my right uh, trigger button on my pro controller set to jump, which makes a lot of corner kicks easier. Yeah, having a seven, second jump button bound Ooh. is, you know, one of the early tricks that speedrunners use to make uh, stuff like that a lot easier, which is cool. There we go. That was better. Only a few more screens in here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and one B is like like all the B sides are really difficult. I believe like they're intended to be played after you beat all of the A sides. Um, so I remember my casual play being like, oh, let me try this out, and it was way too hard for me after just playing City A. So I came back <laughs> to them later. <laughs> Awesome cassette room cycle. So yeah, the heart rooms also have the return of the uh, cassette idea, and really clean cycle there. Well done. Two hundred one. That's Ew. spicy. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, only two deaths. Nice. And look, we're in chapter two now. <laughs> Zoom in. Yes, yeah, I. Blink play... and over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Woo! All right. If you thought you saw not that much of 1A, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to see even less of 2A. Yeah, it really all comes down to where's the cassette hidden in the level? Um, and the answer to this one is really early. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's like 30 seconds in. That cutscene like, skip is so good. Yeah, so what happened there is basically you skip a cutscene and you, if you do it in the right position, you'll just end up inside of the dream block uh, and you can just go right from it. It's pretty great. Yeah, it saves uh, your Y axis, but not your X axis uh, when you skip a cutscene. So if I'm in that position, when I skip cutscene, it's just going to put me in the dream block. Mm -hmm. I really like 2B. It's like very eerie music, but it's also got a lot of really fun like sequence yeah, breaks. Yeah, uh, I was practicing 2B today and it is such a good, it's, dream blocks are just made for speedrunning. Like there's just really cool Hundred percent. Um, and so this bird here is teaching you that you can jump out of dream blocks. You've always been able to do it, but now you know how. Um, and <laughs> this level requires it um, and it just extends the concept of, you know, what you can do with the dream blocks. And it's really awesome. All right, battle and up. Oh, okay, Whoops. she. That's fine. We can. Fix that. <laughs> we have the return of the battle and chaser here um, on some more difficult screens. Are you ready for some puns, Carrie? I am. Puns. Somebody puns. In chat I'm is so asking, ready. What's your favorite level? To be or not to be? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, there is an actual answer to this, and the answer is not to be. <laughs> I am actually a fan of 7B. Uh, I love 7B. I, I really like the music of 7B, and I also just really like the idea of um, Summit being a love letter to all of the previous sections. Yeah. Summit B is really fun. And the interesting thing is, while many of, I mean, while the B sides are harder, um, many of them are actually shorter than their counterparts. Um, they just happen to be more difficult. So it's not like there's the exact same number of screens or anything, um, but right. the checkpoints are modeled after the A side. Um, so you'll see very familiar level structures and, you know, it's just a, it's a remix of what we see in the A side, um, but with a lot more spikes everywhere. <laughs> a lot more spikes. <laughs> yeah. The common thread you'll see in all the B-sides is spikes. In some instances, the, the B-side is actually faster in any percent, isn't it? Correct. Yes. Uh, we use, uh, most often we use 5B uh, for progress purposes, uh, but you can also do 6B as it is technically optimal. Uh, the deaths are just really punishing in 6B, yeah. so it's entirely up to your how comfortable you, you are doing it. And nice. beautiful last screen. That last screen is evil because there are only blue blocks and you have to climb upward. And the amount of times I've been on PB pace and then just fallen five times from there is so rude. That is such a hard <laughs> room. <laughs> she made that look easy. Uh, so we're in resort now, and this one we're going to be in here for a while. Uh, this is one of yeah. the instances where the cassette's actually pretty far out. So for a while, we're going to do a nice casual any percent route of the resort. We're going to talk to Mr. Oshiro a little bit and just kind of do what we usually do here. Listen to the nice uh, chill music in the background. Uh, yeah, we will be skipping the... Basically, if you know where the demo dash is uh, in the standard run, uh, we're going to just be going underneath and snagging the cassette there so we get to see most of the level. It's great. I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't like to do it, but in this case, it doesn't help. Which exactly. Is great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, chapter three, if you're not super familiar with Celeste, um, this is where you start to see the introduction of 
uh, you have these enemies called dust bunnies, and they're on cycles. And when you enter a room, they're on a particular cycle. Um, if you die on that screen, then when you uh, respawn, they're going to be on a different cycle than the one yep. that they were on when you originally enter. So you're going to see a lot of this in here and in 3B. Yeah, and there are a lot of rooms in 3B, like, I only know how to do entry cycle, so I'm gonna leave and come back, because it's just, like, something's just set up so much better on the entry cycle. I agree. Um, and so it just kind of works out that way. Love this mess. Always love cleaning this up for Mr. Oshiro. We're just very helpful. Yeah, we're, we're just very helpful. We're just helping. You're just a little ghost with anxiety. We can help. Nice fast cycle there. Yeah, that was beautiful. That that does re require a demo dash mm -hmm. uh, in order to have just a few less pixels to work with. That is possibly my fastest button press in uh, <laughs> Resort ever. Nice. That was a 150. I've never hit that button at 150. So yeah, talking about huge mess, so casually you're able to complete these three in any order that you wish um, in the any percent route and any percent route. Um, we're going to go bottom, top, middle, and that's just to reduce the amount of time it takes for us to get to Oshiro. Uh, you'll notice that once she hits the button at the end of this one, Oshiro is kind of just like right there, and we do that on purpose. Yes. And we're almost done already. One more little chat. Talk yeah, to our boy really well, Theo. So <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Oh gosh. That is, that is my arm route. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need the winged berry. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, I don't need the berry. <laughs> no berry. But the berry is so like, it's just like hairy. Carrie needs the berry. I have such nutritional value. <laughs> Let me eat 175 of them in under oh, an God. hour. Uh, <laughs> and... Alright, there's mess. Woo! No more mess, just one key. Yep. I was taking care of production stuff, but then I, I start paying attention here again. I hear you talk about eating 175 berries in an hour. <laughs> It's like, I hope those are small berries. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm, what Madeline does. <laughs> I mean, in canon, these strawberries are like as big as she is. So, yeah, they're huge. Uh, like, look at that. That's a monster berry. I mean, also, in fairness, she does not eat them. She puts them in a pie, so. Yeah. The lore, the lore that I believe is that she has magical abilities and she just teleports them to Granny's house every time she collects them. I mean, that makes sense, given the way that they follow her. Exactly! She just has to stop, do the magic, you know. So I did four hyper dashes in a row to just go through all those dust bunnies, get to this cassette room, and we head on out. You can actually see that cassette room, I believe, from a different room in this game. Yes, you can, which is really cool. All right, banger alert. Yeah, this track is amazing. Um, I love this one. <laughs> it gets me so high energy when I get into this level. And this level is really hard at first, but I think like is really fun with practice. Um, just learning the cycles. Like again, you know, you just get used to the cycles. There's just a lot more dust bunnies than usual. Uh, <laughs> really nice pop there, nice. Ah, uh, that one always gives me so much trouble. That was awesome. Yeah, we're seeing the jam emotes in chat already. Yeah. Oh yeah, this song is really, really good. We have a little. So cycle again, a lot of the room. coins, a lot of important. It's just really important to get your cycle where you're comfy. A lot of times, you just once you have your cycle, you you just forget the dust bunnies are there. You're just confident in your movement. Honestly, though. Yeah, yeah. That's the dream. The dream is that you just go through the level the same way every time. You're not even thinking about the dust bunnies. <laughs> I love that screen, that screen. Oh god. Just wait an extra cycle, no big deal. Yep, no big deal, exactly. But this is why we had to have Celeste on the good music edition, like... There's absolutely yeah. no way we, we could leave it off. <laughs> I love the- I think I love, uh, oh. Actually, this is one of those instances where I'm gonna go back to the previous screen. Oh no. It's all good. 
Yeah, so what she's doing there. Is I have kind of forgotten how to do this screen. No, nah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I forgot there for a brief moment. Resetting the cycle there. If you leave the remit, go back, it works. Sometimes you do that. Sometimes you just gotta reset your brain, you know? Yup. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. There we go. The screen's really silly. <laughs> it, it really is, and I've made it. And I have made it look silly. I feel like it's, it's just like a little silly gimmicky room. Nice. And All right. We're gonna still talk to our friend Oshiro. What's up? Uh, we're outside now. We are outside. All right. There's a little spot there that's full of. There's like a little spot there that you have. Um, safety from where there's no dust bunnies. I'm gonna crouch yeah. into there. Oh no! Okay. Yeah, this part can be really Excuse frustrating because it's it's much tighter than the other, than the counterport in the A side. Uh, you have a lot less options to kind of avoid Oshiro, so it's much more important that you take the same path through here. Like there, she's gonna go right over him. Yep. Nice. Gonna do an extended here to just skip all those other pillars because it's scary. And we're already done. So you can see this level is significantly shorter than the A side kind of part because you don't have the huge mess portion. But unfortunately, because the cassette is so far in, it doesn't help us to do in the any yeah. percent route. Yeah. Because you still have to do the huge mess to unlock it, right? Exactly. exactly. You spend four minutes uh, or so getting there that uh, it's a seven minute split when you can just beat uh, 3A in about four minutes. Yeah, if Cassette was in start, I'm sure we would all play 3B. I agree. <laughs> Alright, now we're chilling in Ridge. Um, I'm really excited to get to Ridge B because that has my favorite track in the game. I um, love 4B music, which is apparently, B. like, this is like a controversial topic it's, in the no, Celeste so community. Like gone around, it's gone full circle because everyone used to be super obsessed with 4B and now it's become cool to hate on it. But don't, it's a good song, alright? It's a good very song. good song. <laughs> I used to listen to it on my way to class in college every day. <laughs> I love that for you. Just calming. And I, I think the Ridge A music is also very ethereal and calming. Right. Yeah, but for I, I see more people coming in. Benny Percent is not a typo. Um, we're getting the cassettes and then completing the game uh, with the B-sides. So if you finish a B-side, it will unlock the next level. Uh, it is a category extension for oh. Celeste. Oh no! Yeah. Alright, I put up the important poll in chat. Oh my gosh, how do you pronounce it? Beanie percent. Okay, as much as I love bees, I, I'm i gonna sway this poll. It's definitely Benny percent. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, what's your vote? I'll vote for you. It's Benny percent. We don't yeah. call it, we don't call it any percent. So Beanie percent is very funny. The third option is B any percent, which I hate. I'm glad <laughs> I'm voting for that. <laughs> okay, bunny percent? I love that. I Although, do enjoy the idea of bunny percent. I do like that. Ooh, that's a good one, yeah. Bunny bunny percent is good. <laughs> good poll, good poll. I've been known to make a meme poll or two in my days <laughs> running the streams. You memeing? Hold on. No. <laughs> so 4B is like full of auto scrollers. Uh, but there are still ways for us to uh, get through this level quickly. Yeah, there's some really amazing strats. Uh, I, I think 4B is an extremely well-constructed level. Um, it's it's really cool how it mirrors the A-side in so many ways. Oop, I was squishing and I messed up. Okay. So yeah, the uh, these, these auto-scrollers that have the little like button on top you can move them, and that's a pretty integral part of this level. You have to move it into where the spinners are, because the spinners, the auto scrollers can go through, but Madeline can't go through. Um, and so you have to m be worrying about getting the platform to the end of the screen, because you need it. Yo, um, look at that quarter <laughs> boost. That was nice. And then, of course, fast bubbling is a thing. So if you don't Ooh. know what fast bubbling oh, is, if, if you hit the dash button as you're entering a bubble, you can activate I it would immediately. I like to get in this bubble so I can go, go onto that platform. <laughs> so yeah, Carrie is almost always going to be fast bubbling because it's best. Just some really cool pathway skips here. This auto scroll is pretty infamously terrible. Not a fan, to be honest. Yeah, it's really punishing. 
and stamina becomes a problem. But very nicely done. Very nicely done. Uh, this should be fine. Yeah, get a nice no. extension off okay, that crumble block. There we go. Let's go. Really I was one. afraid that platform was going to be too far away that I would uh, not be able to reach it. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, and we got the wind here that you have to be very cognizant of where it's going to take you. But this is a great level. Nice! Tip there, let's go. I love that. Yeah, I definitely don't Dip recommend that. playing the B-sides until you've completed Summit. I would recommend them playing them after, because it definitely is a spike in difficulty. Those two screens together are really hard. Mm -hmm. Those this one's pretty brutal. Harder too. than I made them look. <laughs> this one's really brutal. You have to get on the side of this block and then like outpace it. Um, but we do a wall bounce here that makes it way much more lenient. Um, it's really hard casually without that wall bounce. <laughs> do do do. This song is just such a vibe. Like it's I really honestly really can't get enough calming. of this. It's, uh, it's, it's so, so perfect for the level. Yeah, it is. It is. I don't the need that cloud. I also just love, um, In Love With Ghost. In Love With a Ghost, very good artist. Incredible, incredible good artist. That's who remixed this track. And, uh, Too Mellow, who me remixes 5B, also really incredible. Oh, hello. Oh, hi, hi down left. <laughs> How are you doing today? I just had an analog moment if really there was skip, one. Um, Harry is doing. Um, right here that's called coin skip so you can see that she is skipping all the coins and what happens is do a little pop off that corner to activate the wind get back in the bubble and then oh. do a bunch of jumps and with the assistance of the wind you can make it up there um, and it's much faster uh, than getting the coins and getting the coins is also really hard so it's worth learning it is and for some reason this is causing me oh my god you got this you got this focus mode yep yep that's better. There we go. There we go. Nice. Much better. Yeah. You're going to skip that first bubble. The wind pushes you all the way over there. I don't think we mentioned it yet, but it's probably one of my favorite things to mention whenever we have Celeste on the show here. It's just strats like that are a good example of how you can make Celeste oh, no. as hard as you want it to be. That's Ooh. like a really, really good run for getting into if you haven't, if you're looking for a speed game and you enjoy Celeste. Absolutely. It's made for speed. Nice! There okay. we go. Fast cycle second time. Fast cycle fast cycle second time, yes. There is so much wind in that level. <laughs> Alright, and then this is gonna be uh just like actual any percent if you follow <laughs> yep. Uh, this is copy and pasted right from any percent uh, because going to the B side is faster. So many Celeste runners have a lot of experience with 5B. Um, it's not that it's an easy level, but it's a rehearse level. Um, and so we're going to be, you know, very optimally getting the cassette and getting the passing the B side here, listening to another crowd favorite uh, track from this game. 5B is quite a, quite a crowd favorite. All right, I didn't do DCB the last time that I did a run around here, so I'm gonna see if I can get it. Good enough. Ooh, well, yeah, you got most of it. Uh, so DCB is a uh, depth corner boost, getting a uh, hyper off of that block as it's zoom in, and you can get a corner boost and fly into the next screen, but it's really tough. But you got the most of it, and that's good. Yeah, it's worth going for because you can get it like partially like that. Also, I'm going to mention that Benny Percent won the poll with a whopping 65%. Let's yeah. go! People are correct. Oh, I didn't get a hyper there, so I didn't quite get the fast cycle. Have we explained hypers yet? Hypers? Uh, we have not. <laughs> um, hypers are um, a tech that they teach you in 8C. Um, where you're holding down right on analog or D-pad, as well as pressing uh, your dash and your jump at the same time. And it essentially acts, it looks like you're skipping like this. Yeah, and she does it right here at the beginning. 
Uh, and it essentially just acts as a dash cancel. Uh, you get a little bit of extra distance off your dash, depending on how long you extend the, the hyper dash. Uh, a super dash is the same in terms of a dash cancel, um, mm -hmm. but it's more, you get more height out of it. Yeah. All right, bubs drop. All right, trick here called bubs drop that manipulates respawn points. So she's lining up to jump off of the wall, come back down, retry and skip, which happened first try. Beautifully I'm done. so happy about that. Oh, I'm so glad. When I was here last time for Hotfix, I had to go around because I failed it like five times. So that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> bubs drop is a yes. thing. But 5B is still faster um, without bubs drop, so. Yes, it very much is. Optimizing 5A is very difficult. And here we're going to do another Oops. skip. You get a jump off of this corner. If you're moving in the same direction as spikes, they will not kill you. So we utilize that there. Uh, so you'd have to do just like a kind of little neutral jump off that wall and go up. Typically, you would need a key to get through there. So we skip that too. We skip both keys. It's awesome. Ironically, you can skip both all three keys in 5A. Um, it's kind of fun. All right, that central chamber, very hard section, IMO. Yeah, once you get past the mirror, it's like, okay, we're chilling now. <laughs> so now we're going to do some cool secret manipulation. Nice high rocks, then uh, you can hit the seeker into the coin to have it collected for you. And that's the goal. And again, here you're going to use some awesome seeker manipulation. Um, what the dream is that you bonk it, you use its explosion, and it's gonna take us all the way to the other side of the screen, basically. And then you boop it again. Oh, you got. I mean, you do boop it again. <laughs> yeah, boop. I am not trying to make you look then, like a fool. That there is we go. the plan. <laughs> Never. Uh, oh. this is different. This is winnable. There we go. That was intended. No one yeah. will know. I'm just trying to make people sweat a bit. That's really all. That's, that's all it is. This is Mixmaster. The lore is that Theo wrote the remix to this track. Uh, and so we're going to just carry oh. Theo through here. You weren't supposed to be there, my friend. Why yeah, were you there? So yes, um, Seekers are not RNG by any means. They are always manipulative. Um, they just are. They move based on where you are. So we use that to our advantage. Yeah, this isn't canon, is it? No. No. None of the, no, no. No, 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 no. Surely not. We're in an alternate universe right now. This is impossible. This is clearly this impossible. Is, this is I clearly... have never beaten this what? room in my life. Wow. First first time for everything. That was epic. All right. That was a pretty good 5 And a nice 303. Well done. Nice. So yeah, you can see that that's a, that's a really fast chapter in comparison to Mirror uh, A. And so it's totally worth it. Yeah, that would have taken me... I got the tape uh, at around, like, one minute. Like, we'll just say a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it takes me another four minutes to uh, complete um, 5A. So yeah. I save basically a minute over my 5A by just going to 5B instead. All right. Any lake skip coming up? All right, I believe. So lake skip is this fancy wall bounce right on this, uh, you jump, wall Whoa. bounce off the spike, go. There's lake skip. Easy peasy. Easy every Sorry, time. Sorry, Kevin. What was that? I said easy every time. Easy every time. It's only like two pixels or something. <laughs> Not easy, but carry makes it look easy. <laughs> it, is, it, it is hard, but I will say once you have a, a visual lineup for it, uh, I once I found a visual lineup for it, um, that was comfortable for me, I very rarely uh, fail it. <laughs> yeah. And it saves a lot of time if you get it first try. So yeah, it absolutely it's does. It's worth trying to implement, even if you're not doing 6B. I love like yeah, so, so it, much. I... <laughs> exactly. Zoom in. Sensible? Yes. Sensible? Sensible. Sensible. Oh, that was great. So yeah, she did a nice, uh, you know, high... zoom in off that Kevin block to dive across the screen and get like set really quickly. Which is awesome. Um, and as we as we discussed previously, 6B is actually faster um, if you're really good at it. Um, but it's very hard. And there's a lot of spikes everywhere. 
Yeah, yeah. Just, look at this first sure. screen and tell me that you think this is going to be an easy level. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. Start is arguably the worst part, too. Um, it's really tight. There are a lot of bumpers. Um, I play on keyboards, so there's also feathers, which Chat. should not exist. Chat, do we have any Heyaz out there? Definitely. See we a couple. definitely have time for some Heyaz. I I'm love sure there'll track. be more coming. I'm for sure. sure. I really like this track. I like the interpretation of the remix a lot. Personally, not my favorite track, but I, as a guitarist, uh, I do uh, respect the guitar in it. <laughs> <laughs> this, I would think I was telling, talking this to you, Frozen, or somebody else, but 6B just has this sound when you get in, like, okay, this is going to be difficult. Yeah, you're just like, all right, here we go. Let me steal myself to play this level. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I do think it's actually like, it's really cool and really, I would say it's really fun casually. It's just, you know, pretty punishing to run. Yeah, a lot of deaths in 6B are like upwards of like 10 seconds, like yeah. for a death. The battle and fight's really cool though. I, I think the battle and fight's really oh. fun. Yeah, so some, some optimizations here with these uh, diagonal uh, dashes. Um, just slight optimizations over the uh, horizontal dashes. I don't need to hug Kevin for that long either. Yep, exactly. Just want to keep moving as much as possible. These these Bumpers. spiky screens can be really rude. <laughs> Bumpers. Yes, Chapter Six also adds bumpers into the mix, and you can yeah. actually use these to your advantage. Uh, bumpers can give you a 1.2 times speed boost if you uh, point in the opposite direction as the uh, direction you hit the bumper, like on the right frame. So I can get a lot of speed off of some of them. Mm -hmm. All right, there is a funny demo dash coming up, and I'm going to hope that I can get this first try. Oh yeah, I believe. So, uh, Carrie mentioned earlier that she plays on Switch, and that means that she has to do manual demo dashes, um, which are much more precise than those of us who play on PC and typically have a bind. Wah. That's all right. Second try. Third try. There we go. But there Carrie, how did you go what? through that wall? <laughs> 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 so, I'm glad you asked. Um, those spinners have smaller hitboxes than the uh, than than they show. Um, so there's actually a small part where those hitboxes do not connect. So there's a little bit of space for me to squeeze in between. And if I'm able to crouch uh, and dash within, within four frames of each other, um, I can make Madeline's hitbox a bit smaller and squeeze through those little sections. Can I skip the feather? Oh, nope, I cannot, but... Yeah, and actually, like, that demo was patched to be easier with the farewell patch, which is kind of funny. According to Uni, it's a two-frame window. Yeah. The devs were like, here, I'll give you all a little bit more room in this funny demo. And we were all like, okay, thanks, it's still hard. <laughs> there are, um... I do a little bit of a claw grip on some demos because, um... It's, it gives me a guaranteed crouch hitbox. What was I doing there? Whoop. So yeah, again, I... like, battled in laser. Gotta avoid it and take a good path through here. Zoom in over that bumper. We do not need it. I think there's a common question that happens in chat when I do runs, and that's why am I why do I play on Nintendo Switch? Uh, it was honestly just the first version that I got like a year ago before I ever got the PC version. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have a uh, any streaming equipment that were good enough to stream the PC version on a laptop. It was like a MacBook laptop. So um, I was playing any percent for quite some time on the Switch and have just sought to improve my times as I go along. I now have the PC version, but I'm just uh, wrapping up a lot of fun things and yeah. showing off that console runs do exist and can be extremely fun. Yeah, that Absolutely. timer in the top left is uh, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. It equalizes the uh, you know the load time difference, you know? Yeah, it, it, that's the great part about this is that like there's no like true leaderboard split because the IGT is so amazing like that. 
This was actually a pretty good 6B. Oh, absolutely. I really hope I didn't just commentators curse myself. <laughs> nah, you have to wait and do that until you have the heart in your possession. <laughs> I but, wasn't uh... saying anything on purpose, and then you said it. All right, there we go. We're, we're, come it's on. all Woo! good. All right, all good. This heart room is not too terrible. A lot of, a lot of blue tiles, but the, the bumpers give you plenty of room. And That's done. Nice. That's that 1.2 times speed boots that I got there on the heart screen. <laughs> Zooming. All right, now we're heading over to the summit. Yeah. We're already here. What we're the heck? Already heck? here. I feel like we just started. Uh <laughs> right? Yeah, we're zooming. We are going. Yeah. We are going fast. Uh, summit, my favorite, my favorite, uh, not my favorite chapter, but definitely some of my favorite music. Absolutely. I I think this chapter is just absolutely amazing and the B-side is constructed incredibly beautifully as well. And so the cassette here is in uh, 1500, so the resort yes. recap section. So we get to chill and hang out in here for Summit for a little bit, so that's exciting. So while you're uh, climbing Summit a little bit, getting towards the uh, cassette, I saw a question that I, I know is a fun one to answer for Celeste Runners. Was like, how difficult is it to fully complete this game? Somebody asked in chat. Mm. Uh, so my original playthrough of this game, I had 1,300 deaths. Um, so it's a bit... To, was it the question to 100% it? 100%, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, it is definitely difficult to 100% it, but I do find um, the grind to do so very worth it, especially because this is a game that tells you hey, you can do this. Like, you can reach this personal accomplishment that you previously thought was impossible. Yeah. Um, but if you are a fan of platformers and, you yeah. know, you're willing to put in the effort, uh, yeah, I. it's definitely going to be hard, but I think it's incredibly rewarding. Yeah, I the, agree. The game does a good job of, like, reinforcing that failure is okay. It's part of the journey. For just sure. Just keep trying. Yeah, there's just a lot of great quality of life things that make it really fun. Like, once you've completed a level for the first time, there's, like, the berry tracker when you open the menu, and it tells you how many berries there are in each checkpoint. Um, it tells you where the hit cassette is hidden in what checkpoint. You know, it's, the game wants to help you, and that's really cool. Also, assist mode is absolutely incredible. If yep. you're like, I couldn't do any of this, um, the assist mode is extremely well made. Uh, plenty of options that you can toggle at any time. Um, I absolutely love assist mode. It's one of those things where you can always start with assist mode, and then as you develop more skill in the game, you know, you can toggle certain options off, um, stuff like that. Um, because, like, my my first playthrough of this, any percent took me about, like, 10 hours. Farewell took me another 10 hours. But, like, over time, it, I just was improving so much of the game, and that's really cool. The game helps you get better at it as you go along. I have yet to... Okay, I didn't do that because I thought I was going to die. Uh, <laughs> but I did not miss a single Dream Hyper in that. Yes, that was smooth. <laughs> I am very proud of myself for that. Oops, I didn't quite yeah. get Madeline moving, but that's fine. Oh, so so what's assist mode I see in chat? So assist mode is available in the options like as you start up a file or at any time on the file menu. And it has a certain amount of options. Like you can give yourself an extra dash. You can slow down the game speed. You can turn on invincibility. There's a, there's a lot of really cool options. Recommend you check it out. And go for the cassette here. We have two dashes. So when we hyper dash or wave dash with two dashes, you get both of your dashes back. And so that allows us to have some really cool strats in these rooms. That was my fastest cassette grab in Summit. That was beautiful. <laughs> nice. Congrats. You just get us talking and then you just zoom. Yeah, Great. just go. <laughs> That's how I love to play. You get me talking, I play much better. Oh my god, this is a cat jam if ever there was a cat jam. The song in context is really good. Um, I super like it with the feel of this level. So here we are in Summit with 300% uh, more spikes. And <laughs> <laughs> that's the level basically. Um, but no joke, this level is extremely well made. I love this B-side and I love her this B-side. Uh-oh. Little bonk. It's just, it's just really good. Yes, yeah, and Lenarine did compose this remix. This is the only remix she did. She did. She did. It's a remix by Kurain, and if 
you know who that is. That's her. <laughs> I like the like sneaky remix name. It's like, wait a second. Hold, Hold on, on a moment. Man. It's like a remix. So I don't need name. that last traffic block. I can just go right through. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Nice. Oh yeah, you can just skip that. I'm gonna steal thing. that. So uh, I'm taking please notes. do. I'm, I'm taking notes. <laughs> Frozen herself studies. is learning Benny percent. Yeah, I am. I'm I'm learning and playing this category, and Carrie's been awesome at teaching me. I've heard that from pretty much like so many people in the Celeste community that there's always people willing to help out and be like really oh awesome if you're yes. picking up the speed yes. run. And Agreed. like, I've seen so many instances of people talking about like people are playing the game casually or oh. doing a first run, and like the whole Celeste community will show up and just start cheering you on in chat. Yeah. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. I see people in Summit, and I'm like, yes, let's go. Time let's do it. Eggs, like, <laughs> um, the community is awesome. Like, oftentimes in like me, me and Carrie's discords, there's people voice chat and teach each other stuff. Um, everyone's super open arms. Just want wants everyone to be better. There's really not this like huge competitive like. No, I'm not gonna teach you my strats thing. Doesn't happen anywhere. It's awesome. So yeah, you can see that these um, these sections are much faster and much shorter than the respective A sections. So the B sides are uh, harder, but they're not necessarily longer, and this one is uh, definitely not longer. <laughs> I'm like vibing right now because uh, I've been playing 7B so much lately for Goldens that, uh, for the Golden Deathless Strawberries that I'm just like focused on pace. <laughs> I yeah, don't... just chilling. I mean, goldens are just really good practice overall. Of just being, being focused, try not to die. It's, it's good. Gosh, I just love this level. <laughs> it's just so good. Agreed. All right, this last room. Oh my gosh, yeah, climbing this tower. <laughs> Back to those yep, silly there cycles. Goes. I delayed too long on that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it's tough. There we go. There That's we go. better. I just keep catching myself bopping while I'm sitting here. I literally, I literally just did the same thing. I just started like rocking like in my chair. I didn't I'm just like. Playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just natural. I, I mean, just the like this. I... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say I just really like this for this song. I just really like the slow progression. Yeah. And that it adds just a little bit more to the like the bass track, the bass like synth, like yeah. as you go along. It's really good in in context with the level. I, I really enjoy it. Okay. I was afraid there was gonna be a snowball there, so I just. Yeah, I was like. Oh. <laughs> I'm also like a the big reason fan I started the... learning farewells oh, sorry, the music. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like. Oh, this music like motivates me to get better at this level. That's really cool. Yeah, I just really love EDM songs that do the really slow build up, adding more oh, instruments as you go. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I love it so much. It's so. It's one of my favorites. All right. <laughs> This screen is one of the more difficult ones. Just having to climb around and use your stamina on those blocks does really well done. Oh, hello. Uh, what? what? Oh. Um, oh. no, oh. that that's not we, savable. We <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was not savable. Oh, no, because you needed another dash to get the baddie, so. Here we go. Don't need that bubble. We're gonna use the little speed. Whew. All right, we're at 3K. All right, we're almost there. Let's go. We're almost there. And there's Three, only 3K there's, 7B is fun. It is, and there's only 20 flags as opposed yeah. to 30 flags in the the A side. All right, chat. You know what to do. Flags. Flags. These flags are fast too. Oh, wait, you're, you're oh. just five. Like, come on. 
Dare I say that's never happened to me before? No! <laughs> there it is. Freak. All right, nice. Flag 13's coming up. Uh, I think a lot of people have yeah. a, a very big hatred of Flag 13. So Bad I'm memories. Try. Just very tight positioning on the cloud. Yeah, um, you have to utilize a lot of coyote frames and kind of essentially walk off the cloud and use yeah. frames that you still have um, nice flag. to get off of it. Ooh, that was closer than I that would have preferred. At the end there. Nice. Chat was a little slow to start counting, but now they're going. Yeah, they're now going. We're Good job. Good job. They just didn't realize we were already at 3k, which is understandable. Yeah. Can we sure. just going too fast? <laughs> I am just... I am, I'm sorry. I know that we want to enjoy the scenery, but I simply must go We, we, we just gotta go. We, we gotta make a pie. The pie's in the oven. It's like gonna burn if we don't take it out. Flag 9, really tough. That's a really hard. Yeah, uh, flag 9 really is hard flag. Your flag. <laughs> and here's where they teach you wall bounces. The thing yeah. that I've been doing for the last, like, 40 <laughs> We've minutes. Been doing the whole time. But yeah, the game does teach you speed tech. It's not just some magical thing that speedrunners, like, invented. Uh, the devs knew what they were doing and actually teach it to you and design the last couple of flags here around them. Oops. Doesn't, is it Core that teaches you how to There we go. Yes, of course he does. Nice funny demo. Funny demo. Yeah, and then Farewell teaches you wave dashes, so you pretty much get almost the whole gambit of uh, speed tech. Flag 2 is also an infamously difficult one casually, because you're it's pretty much a test of wall bounces. All right. Oh, and you're like, oh, we made it. And then it's like, yeah, oh, wait. we're like there. Oh, no. You'd think that. However, this is my least favorite heart room. It is so scary. But Carrie is too good. Let's go. Nice. That's time. GG, y'all. GG. Woo, 802. Let's go. Eight oh, that might be a gold. That's spicy. <laughs> that might be my bet seven B. That was awesome. That you were jamming, y'all. Wow. Good stuff. Of course, we do have to see this pie. Yeah. yeah, you have to see the pie. We have to see this pie. Did we even get any berries? Oh well. Uh, actually, I got two. <laughs> two. All right. That's fair. I mean, they are big berries. They are very oh, yeah. big. They're almost as big small, as Madeline, but... <laughs> so. <laughs> Welcome. And there it is. And that's, uh, yeah. that was only, that was like 45 seconds off of my PB. So yeah, this was, was really actually, a, this was a really good run. I think we can blame all of that on 4B key, the coin room. Honestly, so. we totally could. We absolutely <laughs> could. <laughs> that was really good. Um, so yeah, Carrie, thanks, thanks for having me. And every single person in this chat should go follow Carrie because she's really good at this game. I will also throw that back with an Uno reverse and say everyone should also follow Frozen. Um, Great. <laughs> you got hacked. Uh, me got and hacked. you got hacked. Me and Frozen <laughs> always like we're gonna, we always get schmaltzy at the end of a run, but we really do motivate each other to be the best Celeste runners that we can be. Um, so uh, I always love it when Frozen's around to commentate my runs, and uh, on the flip side, yeah, uh, when I can commentate hers, uh, Celeste. Very fun, very fun game. Even if you don't play it or run it, uh, at the very least, it has a very bumping soundtrack, and I highly recommend going uh, to listen to that and supporting all the artists that were involved in it because they're all very, very amazing. Absolutely, big agree. And and thanks to Rokin for having us again. Uh, yes, love, love showcasing this game, especially with Carrie. So appreciate you reaching out to us. This was really cool. Yeah, and I know that I... you answered this question last week, but if people want to get into Celeste speedruns, where do they go? Uh, uh ahead, sorry, I'm looking at the B side, and according to this, I have like that was a 37 second gold, but that's not correct. But I still think that was a gold. Nice. Um, if people want to get into Celeste, uh, there is the Mount Celeste, uh, the Mount Celeste Discord. Um, there's things there for everybody, uh, getting started with speedruns, 
uh, doing mods, doing tasks, um, just like getting into the community. Um, there are some great tutorials on YouTube uh, to get involved, getting started. And I know people like me and Frozen and many other runners are always super welcoming of new runners. There's, there's so many ways to get your foot in the door. Yeah, it's a really, really beginner friendly speed run. A lot of tutorials, a lot of ways for us to help you. Um, and I'm sure like we would be happy for y'all to, to come by and start learning this game, playing this game. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah thanks drop to, the, uh, uh, Discord link in you, chat for people. Nice. Yay, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I really appreciate you having me on again to show off uh, a category that doesn't see too much action, uh, but one that I think is uh, very enjoyable. Yeah, it's Celeste is a good game for that. There's a lot of um, different ways to play. There's a bunch of category extensions. If you feel like playing a game, the game in a particular way while going fast, there's probably somebody who's done it before and can help you out with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But uh, thanks, Carrie and Frozen Flygon, for showing off Benny Percent for us. That was the official winner of the poll. So that's yes. how you say it, is Benny Woo! Percent. The correct, the correct <laughs> answer. Very happy for that. Can't wait to watch the rest of the runs tonight. I'm super stoked. I yes. love VVVVV, especially. I'm super excited. Mm -hmm. But like both of them said, you should give both of them a follow. They're great people. They do Celeste pretty regularly. But we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to get ready for the next game, which, as Frozen Flygon just mentioned, is going to be VVVVVVVV. Uh, it's going to be 100%, which is still pretty fast. And there's some pretty good tunes in that game. And then after that, we've got several more games. we got Ori and the Blind Forest, Bastion, and Crypt of the Necrodancer. Which are all just fantastic games with fantastic soundtracks. We're going to have a lot of fun bopping the music tonight. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Community Spotlight. We're doing our excellent music edition, slapping bangers edition. We got tons of names, whatever we're feeling like. Vibin edition, cat jams, I think, was thrown around earlier. We're just playing some great speed runs with great music tonight, and I hope you're all having fun, because I definitely am. We are moving on to VVV, VVV, and we've got, uh, I don't know how to say this. It's Chiaroscuro backwards. That's that's my cheat code. I'm sorry, I ruined the surprise yeah, for everybody. People call me Oryx, people call me Oryx, people call me Kiaro, whatever yeah. you feel like. And I I studied enough art to know what that means. Also, I'm on the wrong layout. Let me fix that real quick. Uh, so this is 100%. And uh, why don't you explain what's required in 100% while I flip this to the correct layout? So in V6, 100%, uh, we just call the game V6 for short. Uh, it is... Uh, essentially, there are 20 trinkets scattered throughout the game. You have to collect all the trinkets and save all the crewmates. All right. Are you ready to get started? I sure am. All right, why don't you give me a countdown? Yeah, let's go. Three, two, one, let's begin. And good, my auto splitter works. That's how I know how to... Uh, actually go the right places because I have a horrible memory. Anyways, I am very excited to be with you guys today uh, uh, running V6 100%. Uh, I know that the 100% glitchless category was shown off at AGDQ uh, back in January, was it? Wow, time flies. Uh, uh, thankfully right now, uh, I'm bad at doing glitches, uh, and so, uh, it's going to be a lot faster and a lot crazier. Already we've done some crazy stuff, uh, and let's just get straight into it. We had an opening cutscene there that was kind of explaining things, uh, I just pressed R to die in the middle of that, and that kind of sent me out to the overworld. <laughs> Yeah, we had a few people mention in chat they hadn't seen this game before, what kind of game is it? And like I said, it's a platformer with a twist. It's, uh, it yeah. makes you think about platforming differently, because you don't have a jump button, you've got a reverse gravity button. And that really just, yeah. to excuse the pun, flips the way you think of the game on its head. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You know, I should have come up with these myself. Uh, they're just free. Uh, free puns. Uh, in any case, 
What I'm going, uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm traveling around. I'm looking at a bunch of teleporters. Uh, that's what those round things are, the circle ones. Uh, I'm just going into the same room as them, seeing them, and dying. I'm also collecting a bunch of trinkets and dying when I hit them. Uh, dying is just to go back to the checkpoint. It's a lot faster to do that. Uh, getting uh, a good look at the teleporters is really kind of vital for a, a glitch that I will be doing very soon, actually, called telejumping. And this is a pretty major glitch. It's basically an out-of-bounds glitch, uh, and it lets us skip huge portions of the game. Uh, uh, so, I'm going to get this trinket, I'm going to go to the next teleporter, and then I am going to telejump. And when I telejump, I will be dying and teleporting at the same time. And then I flip, and essentially that just lets me clip into the wall and straight into this level. Uh, and actually, I'm going to mute and unmute the music because it's playing the wrong music for the level, and this is a banger. <laughs> it's oh, appreciated it's that you're not... fixing the music for the, uh... It's actually not fixing itself, which is kind of strange. I've not tested that before, but I thought I might as well try it. It's unfortunate that we have to deal with just the standard overworld music, but trust me, the... The music for this level is a banger, mm -hmm. and it's very sad that we can't listen to it. Uh, but don't worry, we've got plenty of other bangers coming right up. Uh, anyways, uh, what that telejump allows me to do, basically, if you die on the same frame that you enter a teleporter, uh, the game gives you back control as though you have just died, which lets you move while you're teleporting, and moving while you're teleporting can send you into the wall, uh, if you're in the wall, you just go in the direction of gravity uh, uh, until you get out of the wall. And it leads to very interesting things like getting into this level in the middle of the level and fairly early. Uh, got a nice little one second time save there that uh, is frame perfect. Uh, here, this is the best hidden trinket in the game. Uh, uh, so how many trinkets are there? There are 20 trinkets. There's, They're just scattered throughout. There's a lot in the overworld, and then they're in every single level. There's even one in the final level. Uh, so... Uh, we've already got, I think, six or seven trinkets? Maybe even eight. I don't know, I can't count. So... Uh, we'll see uh, as soon as we get this next one. The reason we rescue Victoria there first... ...is... so we have eight now. Uh, yep, we're on teleporter. Uh, the reason we rescue Victoria first is because Victoria will give you a trinket when you talk to her in the space station. Also, don't worry about my sprite, everything is completely normal. Uh, the TV is just for show. <laughs> what did you do to your sprite? Uh, so when you die while talking to Victoria there and getting that trinket, uh, you leave the room, and that messes up something with the sprite table. I don't know the specifics. I'm not the expert on this. You'd have to ask someone else in the Discord. Uh, but basically, your sprite gets completely messed up uh, in the table lookup or something along that lines. And now uh, we're just constantly flipping, and sometimes we're a TV. It's very fun. Uh, here, if I can get it, I will... Okay, there we go. Uh, we just went through an enemy on the side of the screen uh, to get that trinket faster. Uh, 
basically, when those enemies are going off screen, uh, they actually. Uh, their hitboxes despawn, uh, which is very convenient uh, because it's a lot faster to go through them than to go around them. And now we've got our second crewmate. This is the Tellery. Uh, he is the scientist. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to telejump again. So, I will die and press enter on the same frame, or just hold them coming out of that teleporter. Then, I hold right and flip. And, all of a sudden, I'm in the next level. And this is the tower, it's very fun, it's an auto-scroller, and it's, its music is an absolute banger. I want to see all of the jamming emotes in the chat for this. Also, you, I'm kind of bad at this level. I'm going to die a couple times, probably. Are getting with an issue with your stream? Are we? Yeah. Oh. That is unfortunate. Yeah, could you pause for a second if you can? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you just lower your bitrate a little bit, I think it should be fine. We'll just give us a yeah, second okay. to listen to music while we're fixing this. Uh, uh, settings. Okay, give me a second. Sorry about that, folks. It was uh, just starting to skip real bad, and we don't want to miss the music. Yeah, sorry about that. My home Wi-Fi is a lot worse than my school Wi-Fi, which is the reverse of normal, but it is certainly the truth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, just let me know when you want me to unpause. I, I think we should be good. Okay. And we're back. Oh. Ah, I'm dead. <laughs> so yeah, again, apologies about the skipping. My internet is acting up nowadays, but it's all cool. Uh... The tower is essentially a super long auto-scroller. You can save a little bit of time by getting the checkpoints and dying at the top of the screen. Uh, because when you die in the tower, the screen scrolls so that you spawn in a certain way on the checkpoints. And when that happens, uh, uh, it can when the checkpoint is at the very top of the screen, it can save upwards of half a second per checkpoint death. Yeah, you can see the screen just sort of force the scroll to go a little bit faster. Yeah. Oh, and my VLC just crashed. Gosh dang it. <laughs> One second, everyone. So that is the tower, and after the tower, uh, we're going into the intermission. The intermission is very interesting because it's essentially an escort mission. Uh, we can technically skip it, but it's actually not... It's actually, like, incredibly precise to get it to the point where it's faster. Uh, and I just don't feel like spending an extra 50 seconds trying to get it uh, in a marathon run. Uh, so, in uh, the intermission, uh, your crewmate follower, in this case we've got uh, Vermilion, uh, Vermilion will follow you as long as you are on the ground. If you're on the ceiling, Vermilion will not be moving towards you. Uh, and as well as if you're in the air, it just won't follow you. Ah, just a bit early on that one. 
playing that a bit safe. Oh, I was just a bit late there. You can get past this entire room in one cycle there. Here, you're supposed to go all the way back and backtrack, uh, but you can also just die and respawn at the checkpoint, and it's a lot faster. And here, I will be trying something. I might not get it. Okay, let's see. Oh, well, that's a miss from the start. Let's try this again. Uh... Okay, I have just straight up missed that. Uh, I was trying to do a cool wrong warp that saves about 10 seconds, uh, but I just don't know the timing for the wrong warp. Uh, so, now we get to see my bad overworld movement to the next trinket instead. So this trinket is way out of the way. I'm going to give a bit of a premature seizure warning uh, if anybody's photosensitive. Uh, there is a large flashing elephant uh, in this room. Luckily, we're not going to have to pass it a second time because we just die when we get that trinket and we actually get to skip a text box because I did that frame perfectly. Yeah, hang on, we're losing the stream again. Oh, are we? Yeah. Everything seems fine on my end, uh, but then again, I am not certain how reliable my end is, so. All right, we've got it back. Okay. I think we missed the elephant anyway. Yeah, okay. Well, that's probably a good thing if you missed the elephant. The elephant is very flashing. And yeah, so this is Space Station 2. This is kind of intended to be like an extension of the first level. Uh, it's connected to the first level and we can actually abuse that in any category that's not glitchless. So we're going around collecting trinkets here. Later in this level is what is considered by many to be the hardest trinket in this game. Uh, uh, but it's not actually that hard when you have been speedrunning this game for five years. So that tends to happen in a lot try. of games. Yeah, hopefully first try, but it's still a bit of a doozy. It's coming up right here. And that is the easiest frame-perfect trick in the game. Uh, dying frame-perfectly when you touch that trinket. I find it's incredibly easy to time. And this game isn't exactly to get... It's, it's not exactly the most difficult to get frame-perfect tricks on, considering it runs at less than 30 frames per second. So here, uh, we've actually skipped right back into the first level of the game. So we're getting a lot of intro cutscenes here. Thrilling, I know. Yeah, and confuse the game's music there for a second until you hit the cutscene. Yeah. Uh... And the reason we're going back to this first level in the first place is, first of all, we haven't rescued our first crewmate. Uh, and now I've said first five times in one sentence. 
Uh, and second of all, there's two trinkets in this level that we still need to get. Uh, one of them we've just gotten. Uh, the second one is right here. And I flipped the frame early there. <laughs> So, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter this teleport, and then I'm going to get a dialogue with the first crewmate. I'm going to be holding the uh, die button while I trigger that dialogue, and that will skip the entire opening cutscene, which is very good, because it would have undone all of our progress. And now we... Tele jump again, right back into the middle of Space Station 2. This is the other really hard trinket in this level. Uh, you have to avoid all of the checkpoints uh, in those rooms so you can respawn on that checkpoint. And this is our last crewmate. So after this, Hang on, can you we are going to be... Lower it again, because we're losing it pretty bad again. Yeah, okay. I just don't know what's going on with my internet right now. I'd really appreciate if it would not be this bad. Okay, I've lowered it again. Hopefully okay. things... You just let me know when you're going back into it? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting back in. I'm just in the middle of a cutscene. Okay. So... Uh, in this cutscene, basically all of the rest of the crew is back at the ship. Uh, but they can't find us because we've been teleported into another dimension. And so that's where we are right now. This is the final level. I guess now would be a good time, uh, since we're like two minutes away from completing the game, to explain kind of the plot. <laughs> uh, so basically, you're Captain Viridian. Uh, that's me. Uh, that's the one that's moving on the screen. And you and your crew are just going through an ordinary day, and then you suddenly get teleported to this strange dimension full of spikes. Uh, at when the ship crashes. And so you have to go through the game rescuing them from the teleporter malfunction that scattered you all around the dimension. And then you have to fix the dimensional instability, which we've just done right now, uh, and get back to the rest of the crew. Anyways, uh, you might have noticed, you probably didn't notice, uh, because it was a very fast text box, but the last trinket text box that we got said that we had 19 out of 20 trinkets, not 20 out of 20. Uh, and that's because this is the last trinket in the game. You can see 20 out of 20 there. <laughs> and that is VVVVVV 100%. Was that time? Uh, yes. Uh, Tom oh, was on all crew members yeah. rescued. Uh, so, in game time, that's a 1934, which is pretty decent. Sub 20. Is definitely a. Sorry, what was that?
uh, I was going to say sub 20 is definitely a great marathon time. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of this. Yeah, thanks for coming on and uh, showing the game. Sorry about all the, the skipping and the internet issues. We still heard oh, the yeah. music pretty well, but fortunately yeah, it was a little I'm, hard I'm, to watch it a few times. Again, I am super glad to have been able to participate here. There is one more banger in the soundtrack that we haven't heard, though, and that is the credits music. So I'm going to skip through all the text and let that start rolling. Again, thank you so much for having me. Okay, right. thanks for being on. That was a V V V V V V V V hundred percent. We've got a few more games to show tonight, uh, so we're gonna take a quick break here in a moment. Just as a quick reminder, uh, we're gonna be playing a few ads during the break, and if you are subscribed to the channel, you will not get those ads. So we'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing to help support the hotfix content, and of course that would mean you won't see any of the ads that are coming up at the same time. Nice little. Uh, bonus for helping us out but we'll be back in just a few minutes we're gonna play uh ori in the blind forest definitive edition all skills coming up after this so we run by uh Primorix. so stay tuned we'll be back in just a few minutes community spotlight it would help if i unmuted myself hello everyone and welcome back to the community spotlight we are continuing onwards with our Cat Jam episode, excellent tunes, slapping bangers, whatever you want to say. We've got excellent games with excellent music. Haven't been able to determine what name we want to give it, so we keep changing it every time. But as a quick reminder, we've been talking a few bit about stuff that's upcoming on Hotfix. We do have West Coast Weekend this weekend, but as well, we've got a few new shows that have been showing up on Hotfix. So you haven't checked them out yet. We've got a new one starting this week, this Wednesday, after Mercy Kill, never before seen. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we had uh, Games Done Classic this last Sunday, not not yesterday, the one before it. And of course, uh, Speedruns from the Crypt started last week and will be coming on again next week as well. So lots of new shows. If you've been, haven't caught any of the new shows, try and make sure you stay tuned for them. There's got some cool people running them, some fun content for you all coming up on Hotfix as we continue to build out our schedule and bring you more speedrunning content. But we've got Primorix here who's going to run Ori in the Blind Forest for us. And see Average joining us on commentary. How are you both doing today? I'm great, thank you. Ready to show off this amazing game, great music, of course, and a really just technical, really awesome speed run. Yeah, and I'm ready to watch. So, when you say all skills, what's the requirement for the speed run? Like, let's, what is the yeah, skill so in this game? There are. Yeah, so most of them you obtain from uh, skill trees that are scattered in different areas of the world. There are a couple you get through other means. I think in all in all, there are 11. So you're visiting just about every location in the game and obtaining the uh, skill, which can be like a movement skill or an attacking skill, uh, things of that nature to basically round out your ability set. And, uh, yeah, so we get all of those and finish the game without going out of bounds. Was, uh, out of bounds the only restriction in this category? There uh, other... so there's one other that's no teleport anywhere, so there are a class of, uh, glitches that also can be used to mess with the teleporters and, among other things, basically wrong work, well basically rotate kind of where or transform where you teleport to i'm sure the uh if or Mag people are watching they'll want to correct me you, on that you go but, places uh, you're not supposed to go as yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> yep yeah. yep exactly <laughs> so you know restrict kind of the really you know restrict a couple classes of glitches but there's still a lot of things you can do in terms of cutscene skips and movement tech and things of that nature so uh, there will be a lot to try to unpack as I go through this all right are you ready to get started yeah just let me uh all right yep all right give me, me a countdown whenever you're ready okay three two one go so yeah uh gave a brief introduction here as I uh skip the prologue and yeah so we start out with a pretty you know limited move set this being a metroidvania the first thing i will do uh in the run i actually turned on the ui here i'm going to turn it off now 
because that actually uh, having it off disables text boxes from appearing. So that just kind of passively saves time during like cutscenes and pickup animations and such. So I'll have it off for quite a bit of the run and just have to keep track of my resources, uh, health, energy, and experience on my own. So we're very quickly coming up to the first skill of the game. So this is going to be Sign, uh, our orb buddy here who will give us access to the Spirit Flame. Just a basic uh, projectile attack that automatically homes in on whatever uh, enemy is nearby or closest. And uh, yeah, so we're going to put it to work right away to take out a few Frankies. Yeah, so a Franke is this uh, this little thing here. Uh, I, I don't know if that's really what they're called. I think that's just a community name for these weird squ squirrel frog things. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, now you can see we've got kind of a run, jump, attack skill set. That's, of course, going to be expanded quite a bit as I go around to the different skill trees and collect the uh, skills that this game has to offer. Uh, for now, I want to keep an eye on my health. I want to be at uh, one health specifically, so I'm actually not going to get hit here, but do a damage boost a little bit later uh, for a trick called a ghost door. So I'm going to pick up a couple keystones here to allow me to open a door and then basically save and die after placing the keys in the door. And when I respawn, the door will be very briefly despawned so that I can go through it like that. And uh, interesting routing thing here, I'm going for kind of an optimal route of not getting the health cell all the way up there, uh, up above where I was just a moment ago. So this is going to make this part and generally the rest of the run quite a bit riskier, but it does save a little bit of time. I will need to get some more health later, so uh, I'll bring that up again at the end of the run. But for now, it's just all about experience management. So I have kind of a high amount of experience. I'm going to skip over this. And I want to basically get a timed level up to help uh, speed up some of my movement coming in and out of the, well, really coming out of this area. Break those brambles. And yeah, so anyway, we've reached the first skill tree, uh, which is the main way you get skills in the game. And this one is going to give me the wall jump skill. So as the name suggests, you can jump up walls. There's no stamina or anything. So you can just do it, you know, as high as the wall goes and climb up walls really easily. Well, sort of easily. All of these little, <laughs> uh, so this game is very pretty and like all of the walls have all these nice little like curves and features to them and stuff. Um, but unfortunately, that's exactly what the wall looks like, or like, is for collision as well. So it makes wall jumping a little weird sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, you'll see probably plenty of that as I get into uh, one of the next couple areas of the game, the Moon Grotto. But for now, we're just kind of backtracking. Got wall jump, we're going to head back towards the spawn point. Because uh, in there, there's an area that's added into the definitive edition of the game, which is Blackroot Burrows. That's going to give me access to the dash skill, which, uh, you know, being a speedrun definitely sounds like something I want. So it's a little tricky to get with uh, just the skill set that I have right now, but definitely will be able to make it through. Done it plenty of times. Uh, this menu trick is called a save anywhere, so I pull up the ability tree and do a, a little menu storage to be able to move while it's open. And then leveling an ability in the cutscene uh, allows me to then save the game inside the cutscene and reload to skip it entirely. So I have to focus a little bit here in Blackroot because I need very kind of precise planned out movement to be able to catch the best platform cycle in kind of the middle section of this. So far, so good. All right, that jump is nice. one of the harder parts. 
Uh, also, the hard part is navigating the lasers <laughs> uh, that are coming up. I actually am drawing a blank on what my experience was coming in here, but I think I need to I need a little more. Yeah. So the most most of the run, uh, we don't really have to worry about um, experience, uh, but this we do need a need it to be a within like 19 of a level up when we leave this area uh, for. Um, a trick that we're doing to do a big sequence break. Uh, and the closer to that, like, the closer to zero, the better. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty Especially much. because Prim is not using Magnet, which makes it even harder if you are further away from 19. Um, and then after that, after that sequence break, there's no more, like, worrying about how much XP you have for the most part. Like for the most part, thing. yeah. Uh, and actually here I'm going to be showing better. off relatively new tech. Uh, thanks to Tritonite, a runner in the community. So basically it's uh, a faster way to do a uh, cutscene stack to enable some blind movement in this next area. Or when leaving the dash tree, rather. So gonna drop down here and save in a pretty precise location. Do that save anywhere trick. Check my experience real quickly. So I'm good, and I can now walk over back to my save, rekindle it, and I'll just end up skipping the cutscene and being in exactly the right spot to do some blind movement. So that lets you have control while this cutscene's going on, basically? Yep, yep, so now I got all the way <laughs> pretty much out of Blackroot while the cutscene was playing. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I had not seen the, like, what you just did there. I've seen it when it... That was, like, early when it was, like, the cutscene stack. I've not seen the mm. full, like, rekindle skip there. That's really cool. It's time yeah, to no, that floor. is only probably a few weeks old, I would say, in terms yeah. of being found pretty recently. Also, I'm just kind of taking this Franky for a ride. Uh, yeah. Just going on I... a journey. Yep. It'll be pretty obvious why in a second. All right. So that right. door takes four energy to open. Uh, actually, I'll let someone else explain it because I have to not die here. Yeah. Okay, so I'll explain it now. Oh, I died no. there. <laughs> just jumped out of the water too early, I think. <laughs> So yeah, the door takes uh, four energy to open, but I only have two max energy. So the way I get through the door is by putting my two energy in, killing the Franky so that I level up, and then putting the second two energy from the level up refill in the door. Yeah, and I actually pulled it off really well there, but uh, then died in Death Gauntlet, as it's called. Yep. Yeah, so this is... Yeah, this is the bit I was talking about earlier, where um, this is easier the more XP you have. Um, Prim, unfortunately, is like 18 from level up, and the Franky gives 19. Um, so without Magnet, it's a little a little hairy, but, you know, he knows what he's doing, so it's fine. Yeah, and that works, because when you don't have enough energy, and you try to put it in the door, it lingers there for a second, as does this, like, you don't have enough energy animation. So when you level up, yeah, you as put long in the as extra you... energy. Yeah, as long as you stay close enough to the door, it'll just kind of stay there, um, which is really nice. Um, it's, but yeah, so now we're now Perm is through Death Gauntlet, which is yep. good. Took the save Gauntlet a little earlier early. than I normally would, uh, just so I didn't have some weird mishap and die again. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm just uh, making my way to. The double jump tree, one thing to note is I picked up a keystone way back in Glades that I actually didn't use in its kind of intended location. So now I have two just from picking that one up and that saves quite a bit of time. Uh, just being able to do that ghost nice. door right good away. Ghost door. And yeah, now we're at double jump. Uh, it took a little longer than I would have liked, but we're still in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've seen Ori Runs in the past, you probably have seen Blind Movement here before. 
Um, that's not a thing anymore, which means, you know, you get to see this area <laughs> a second time. Uh, but that... Yeah, I kind of don't mind it for, like, this setting because it saves me uh, the trouble of, you know, accidentally messing up the movement and then saving in the water. Things yeah. like that. Uh, but, yeah, I don't have the regroup ability, which I would have if I did the blind movement. So saving does not yet restore health. Here's a big sequence break here. Um, oh. Called Grotto Skip. Nice. Just some tight double jumps on some little itty bitty ledges. Uh, saves a, a big old chunk of time. <laughs> yeah. Another rekindle skip. Um, this is to avoid dropping some rocks and having to go through like an obstacle course while climbing this. These walls are really slippery, so not having the rocks is very helpful. Yeah. And we do another one here to uh, just be able to get to the water vein a little bit faster. So to explain kind of the structure of this game is there are three dungeons with three elements that you have to, I guess, restore to the forest. And basically the flow is you get a dungeon key, you go into the dungeon, and then you clear it and restore the element. Uh, of course, I'm not going to do very much of that. I'm actually going to restore zero of the three elements. <laughs> Leave the forest exactly the way I found it. Rip the forest. <laughs> oh. Gandalf? Oh. Oh. Uh, I, forgot to grab, uh, I forgot to grab health. Yeah, so uh, right, we, we call sure that slime Gandalf because sometimes it just doesn't let you pass. Um, <laughs> this time it really didn't yeah, let, yeah. let you pass. <laughs> yeah, I needed to grab that flower right there, but I just did not think to in the heat of the moment. I also really enjoy how broken Gumo's animations get when you do this all in the wrong order. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so That's that sequence really break uh, with the Franky basically meant that this area got uh d like went through this area completely backwards essentially um so gumo gets really confused yep <clears throat> all right so i actually got a nice cycle here uh totally the sort of thing I should be caring about after taking two pretty big deaths. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, you take the wins where you get them. And now this is kind of the new part. Uh, gonna rekindle skip this cutscene and then do a save anywhere. And save at the Ginso door. Yep. Do so a menu trick known as game storage. A very informative name that's going to allow me to basically move uh, during the cutscene that would normally be playing when you enter the Ginso tree. Yeah. So that is what removed the double jump line movement. Uh, basically, Prim needs to be able to do the save anywhere and needs an ability point to do that. So not using the, uh, the save anywhere at the double jump tree uh, allows that to happen. And it's a little bit faster. Yeah. Also, in case you didn't know, that second room is uh, very difficult to do quickly. Had a yeah. bit of a flub there. There's like a single good cycle for those little, uh, I think we call them gamers, the little spiky things that go around in circles on those logs. And as soon as you get off of that cycle, all chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that death I took Finally, we got to an intentional death. Uh, I actually meant to do that. And uh, that is just to set up a faster cycle for this puzzle room. And I hope I get a three cycle here, but it probably won't. Oh, I already didn't. That was not good. Yeah, so um, we mentioned earlier that Formorix doesn't have Magnet, um, but that does mean that this room's faster because you get the um, better uh, better shots from sign um, so it means you can three cycle um, which we didn't see there but it it also means that you're going to four cycle which is good because being able to four cycle if you have magnet is very difficult so it's definitely faster there yeah so 
basically I leveled an ability called Quick Flame that allows me to shoot three shots with no cooldown instead of two. So like three at a time. And now we get Bash, which is a really cool skill. Uh, lets you just grab onto an enemy or a projectile or these lanterns, for example, and fling yourself off of it and it gets flung in the other direction. You can kind of break that and aim uh, Ori and the thing you're bashing independently using a glitch called a double bash, which I'll be doing in a moment to set up my key dupe. Oh, I missed. That's not good. All right. Oh. There we go. So yeah, now for key dupe, I'm going to pick up uh, three of these keystones. It takes four to open the door. Then I'm gonna place them in the door and die really close like that. And at this point, I have three keystones in my inventory, but I can pick all the keystones up again. So that is gonna allow me to just take three extra keystones with me to use uh, for the rest of the game. So I'll actually show it here. Uh, well, I'll show it after this mini boss. But I have three keystones on me, and that's going to help enable a sequence break that allows me to skip doing the Ginso escape and cleaning the water. Right there, three keystones. So those are, uh, we, we just fought two of the mini bosses in the game. Um, this game doesn't have a ton of, like, focus on combat. Um, so, there. I mean, we call it, it's a mini boss, but really, like, that's the closest thing to a boss that there <laughs> is. Um, and let's see, I think there's only like one more mini boss fight, and it's uh, yeah, Misty. It's not even really a fight, so <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're lining up for a trick called Swamp Entry. Uh, this is going to take me over to the area that I would be in if I did the Ginso escape properly or, you know, at all. It's so one of the more gonna, challenging tricks. Yeah. Take this frog for a bit of a ride and double bash the shot. Uh, didn't even phase through. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so frogs are mythical beings and sometimes the things that they do just don't make any sense. Um, so there's an alternate version of that strat where you actually take the frog all the way over instead of doing the double bash um and the frog sometimes just like goes through the floor which means you have to start over or the shot will go through the floor and it's just yeah it's great yeah <laughs> you sound so pleased <laughs> about this see <laughs> <laughs> yeah frog, frogs are wonderful yeah they uh, really are uh so now we have Stomp. Uh, this scale is going to allow me to move downward very quickly, of course. And it actually combines really well with uh, an ability I'll be getting later in the run called Charge Dash. But more on that later. Um, so keeping true to the musical theme of tonight's show, uh, this frog that we just used a second ago, we're going to use again. Um, and its name is Ringo, and you'll you'll see why. That's oh so goodness. interesting. Just a little drummer frog. <laughs> Are we gonna see... I don't remember, do we get the other frog-related uh, sound thing in this run? Oh, no. We don't? Oh. Not if we're I going mean, fast, but I mean, if I you guess... ask really nicely. <laughs> um, oh, anyway, a, a thing just happened. It didn't look like a thing happened, which is good, because it meant it happened. Uh, there was a cutscene there. Um, so, Primorix, like pause there to set up a bash off of a frog shot that was to basically pull yourself through a cutscene trigger um by like snapping to the projectile with the bash um and that takes some really precise timing and uh like uh oh what's the word i'm looking for like uh location and whatnot um to you know get through that cutscene trigger without actually triggering the cutscene we have one request for the other frog <laughs> Only one so far. Uh, I mean, we'll see if I can remember to go do it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. No promises, okay. 
So a little bit of blind or semi blind movement here behind a menu. Um, this is to do another, just save anywhere to skip another big cutscene. Um, and now the game's going to get really fast. Um, so yes. uh, also really dangerous because now I've reached the point of the game where because I haven't picked up any additional health, uh, the spikes here do three damage. I have three health. Uh, you do the math. But that's going to be the case <laughs> for pretty much the rest of the game. Yeah, so a lot of the additional damage boosting on spikes that you've been doing throughout the run just doesn't work anymore. Yep. Uh, so the next big trick coming up here is called Fast Stompless. Um, so there's a big pile of rocks um, on top of a, like overhead of a bird that you need to, uh oh, uh, that you need to bash in or, or stomp in order to like knock the rocks onto the bird and to like make the bird go away so that the bird doesn't kill you. Um, but uh, it's a lot faster to instead get a spider to do all that work for you so that you can go do some other stuff while the while the spider's doing that work. So um, basically, Brimworks is gonna bash this spider shot and then deload um, like the scene uh, so that the spider shot can get through um, where it oh normally God. wouldn't. Okay. And there Sorry. we go. Get that ability cell while the spider shot is on its way over to the rocks. Gets the cell right before the rocks drop on the bird, and then yeah, that was you get teleported. just in the nick of time. Uh, one of the spiders yeah. down below gave me a bad shot, so I had to really hustle to get up there. Chat, chat is really asking for the frog right now. Yeah, I'll I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> So now there's charge dash and feather and stomp. So we have all of our all of our zoomies now. Um, here's the most difficult trick in the game called sorrow bash. Um, it is called sorrow bash because this area we're going into is uh, called sorrow, um, and also because this trick causes lots of sorrow. Um, so I mean, you'll you'll see why. Um, it's a bunch of precise um, movement and like double bashes and all of those spikes do four damage and there is three health currently on Ori so they all hurt a lot um, but it's fine because Bromorix knows how to play this game and is good at it. Um, so you, so, want to, oh. you want to explain the big upward zoom thing that's going on right now? Yes. Oh yes. This, this is my favorite trick in the entire game. It's called rocket jump. Um, for obvious reasons um, and basically how rocket jump works is that you charge dash and jump on the same frame or like charge dash and then cancel that charge dash on the same frame so either with jump or feather um, and charge dash targets an enemy so if an enemy is above you it sends you flying upwards super quickly um, and then the same is true if the enemy is below you. And then we just call that a meteor kick because it sends you careening downward even faster than a stomp does. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, the also thing to note for energy routing, as far as that goes, is that that always is going to cost an energy, which is not necessarily the case for normal charge dashes. I'll get into right. that a bit later. Uh, yep. Um, For now, we're just getting the Sunstone, using the save anywhere to skip the very long cutscene that is going to play once I get the Sunstone. Yeah. Um, what Primorix just did there to get into this area um, was called a Terra Break. Um, so, use the save anywhere up against the wall, that or the ceiling that you're normally supposed to stomp. Um, there's not another way to break it from where you were. Um, so normally should have stomped that ceiling, but instead did a save anywhere up against the ceiling, um, went down to the ground, and then died while doing a charge jump. Um, so then when he respawned, oh, oh, get the frog, get the frog, get the frog, no! <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, the Wilhelm scream. Uh, so yeah, um, Basically, once Primorix did the charge jump uh, and died during the charge jump, when he respawned, he was doing charge jump things um, and broke the ceiling uh, that he wouldn't have been able to reach otherwise. Um, sorry, there's a lot going real fast now. <laughs> this game picks up speed real quick. Um, so this is Misty. Uh, Misty 
uh, is like this shape shifting forest um, where every time you like pick up a keystone, the forest changes, and uh, it's really cool uh, and really scary because all of the spikes hurt so much. <laughs> uh, and now you know we're at max speed because we have our charge dash. Um, we have stomp, which lets us do stomp cancels, which is like charge dashing and then stomping before the end of the charge dash to refund your energy so you can do even more charge dashes and go even faster um because you know we're not going fast enough and it's not scary enough yet um <laughs> gotta keep going fast uh so last skill or no not the last skill yeah, this is not quite. a skill that is not really going to get used much um it's called climb uh but since we already have wall jump and all of the other ways to go vertical at this point um it doesn't get used a ton until the very end of the game that's kind of an unfortunate death like it's not a huge setback but it does make me lose my the experience i picked up which is probably gonna and did it again uh mess up my level up at the end here but not a big deal Yeah. All right, let's... Misty is um, Misty is kind of a place where, like, it's. I mean, everyone practices it a ton because it's so like spooky and you're going so fast the whole time. Um, but that kind of hurts in a way because you have so much muscle memory that as soon as anything like changes at all because you like flubbed up something, uh, it just gets really weird. <laughs> like, you have to try and break all of your muscle memory to get back through. Yeah, but it is a really fun part of the game to do. I think a lot of runners will say that. Um, just I love because that you, you get, you have at this point like all pretty much of the relevant movement tech, and you're just blazing through everything. Uh, that also was a mini boss. Through that mini boss. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm just a little bit short of leveling here. Uh, so, gonna have to kill a slime right here. Yeah, that was the last little bit of, like, specific level ups that you wanted. Uh, and yeah, that one's the, by far the least important one to, like, get perfect. <laughs> um, yeah. Because it can easily be recovered from. Yep. So now we're heading back into Blackroot Burrows. There's one final skill that I have to pick up which is the light grenade. Uh, only have two energy, but using things like uh, stomp canceling to refund the energy for the charge dash, also that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A little leftover cutscene from the skill tree there. Yeah, I'm able to stretch it uh, pretty far, the two uh, energy. That little death there was in fact intentional. That was like a rekindle while pulling the lever to open the door so that the door stays open. Uh, that laser was spooky. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it always is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and that was another cutscene skip for a really, really long cutscene. Um, and now we have all of the skills. Um, this is yep. Grenade, which is an even more useless skill than Climb. Uh, but when you put them together, in addition to charge jump, we get uh, the big zoomy called grenade jump, uh, which will be very important for the very uh, end of the run. Hope you like spooky lasers, by the way. I, I sure don't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, at this point, have basically everything I need to finish the game except for health. Uh, so I need five health to do the final escape because the water still damages me and I can get through only taking four ticks of damage, but anything less than that and I'm just kind of dead. So fortunately there are a couple health cells at the end here that are not particularly out of the way. So I'll be picking those up. Also want to make sure I have some energy left uh, at the end of this because the version of the final escape I'm doing uh, involves a trick called Warmth Skip, which uh, basically, among other things, has the effect of not refilling my health and energy. So I have to have one energy for uh, charge dashes and 
other tricks at the end of the run. Yep. Uh, so this next trick is called uh, Door Warp. And it's yeah, give basically. Give me your up arrows, please. Yeah, up arrows in chat, please. Um, <laughs> oh, just kidding. Didn't even need it. So that's like a neat little wrong warp where if you enter a door on the first frame that the door loads, it takes you somewhere. Um, and that one's just like super convenient because it takes you to the end of Horu, which is very good. So now we're going to. Prim, Prim's going to do some of the final escape here blind because, you know, that seems good. Uh, and then go fast. Um, reminder that no damage can be taken because all of the health is needed for uh, the swim that's about to happen. Shout out to Primorix for not taking any extra health during a GDQ hotfix. <laughs> and this is because you skip, you skip cleaning it. the water, right? Yep. Yeah, skip cleaning the water. So that water is still poison and hurts a lot. Um, and the fish hurt and everything hurts. And here's the grenade jump that we got climb and grenade for, and that skips a big cutscene. Um, and it's not time yet. Not quite yet, no. Yeah. I I will call it uh, once Naru basically walks past one of the trees, uh, and I also have my splits up, so hopefully I can get it at about the right time. Yeah, I'm just mentioning it because it's usually confusing for people who don't know the timing of the run because it looks like oh, you finished yes, but yes. not yeah, quite yeah. yet it's the last bit like input here. that isn't holding right but you still have to hold right all right and time all right so yeah that was uh ori in the blind forest it's it's all over the place there's a lot <laughs> going on and i just really love like you have in this run in particular like a few different kinds of movement that you have to master and you really do have to master all of them because they're all very important and they all require a lot of optimization to do well <laughs> so you know there there's just always something you can improve on and it's really fun to get into for that reason yeah this is by far like the speed run and like the category that I have spent the most time with and like enjoyed the most and it's just i mean it's just such a good run everything about it's so good and some of the tricks that Primorix is doing have like s simpler um like options and stuff like that and Primorix is one of the you know top runners of the game so some of that's just like crazy and you don't need to <laughs> don't need to do it um there's even some other stuff that's even harder and just just no fun for anybody um but yeah i mean it's a great great speed run there's uh, you know, it's one of those that's like pretty easy to pick up aside from a couple tricks, but then like you just have so much room to work with it to get better. And there's a bunch of different categories as well. Oh yeah, lots. Yeah, of definitely. Categories. So uh, you have all skills. Primarily, that's run with uh, the no out of bounds, no teleport anywhere rule set. Uh, all cells, which you pick up all of the health, energy, and ability cells available in the game and that can be done also no out of bounds or no restrictions which involves a uh, a lot of clipping and different mm -hmm. uh crazy things you didn't see in this run uh let's see there are those are probably the most popular but there are some other kind of side categories that are pretty cool yeah. too there's there's, like, a, there's any percent which has no restrictions, no out of bounds, selected restrictions. Um, yeah, some really weird categories um, like signless, bashless, stompless. Which, uh, if you notice, sign, bash, and stomp were all kind of important, um, <laughs> but apparently not important enough to be needed. Um, yeah, you can do it without it. Um, or reverse event order, uh, which is a trip to watch. Yeah, of there's, course, there's uh, a second Ori game that's also fantastic. Yes, yes. Yep. And there's uh, a great randomizer for uh, both. But both games, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> both <laughs> games have a fantastic randomizer, bingo, um, like multi-world style co-op, like all sorts, just whatever you can imagine, basically. Yeah, there are definitely you know if you. have 
played this game and you know really love it uh there are a lot of ways to continue playing it and continuing to experience it in different ways uh which is great you know that's for me at least a lot of what you know speedrunning is about so it's really awesome yep and of course if you'd like to get into it i think you mentioned it just uh discord is a good place to go there's also yes just you can find that on speedrun.com uh but do you have any final shoutouts before we wrap things up here for Ori? Um, I think I think that's it. I uh, want to thank C, of course, for uh, helping with the commentary. And I guess I'll uh, be helping him out with commentary for the next yeah, one. So. <laughs> Stick we're around. Gonna, we're not going <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Oryx and C, you're going to trade places here in a second. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a real fast run from C. If you thought... Ori went fast. You'll see how fast C moves afterwards. Uh, but just as a quick reminder, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to play a few ads while we're doing that. If you're subscribed, you won't see the ads. Uh, and of course, we'd appreciate it if you would consider subscribing if you haven't already, as uh, Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits, and it really helps out. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. We've got a Bastion run coming up by C Average, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Community Spotlight. We've got Promorix and Sea Average, but they have changed places. As we've got Sea Average is gonna run Bastion for us. The any percent run, it's very, very fast. But we're gonna get some good tunes. Uh, probably mostly at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you, you'll see why we, we're not gonna have too many tunes at the start. But we'll be able to chill out a little bit at the end while we're doing shoutouts and talking, saying thank you to both of these folks and listening the music but uh this is a very short run is there anything you want to explain before we go just because like... um no i i mean i don't think so uh it should be all right most of it's just at the end is where things get weird so should be all right yeah we'll go for it yep <laughs> all right then give me a countdown all right well let me go ahead and continue on normal mode here and i'll get you a countdown Three, two, one, go. He gets up, sets off for the Bastion. All right. So first thing is that Bastion is run on keyboard and mouse, um, specifically with the mouse directional controls, um, because it's actually just straight up faster um, movement that way. Um, so now we have our roll, um, and we're just gonna kind of roll past everything, skip a bunch of stuff. Yep, so and... just to elaborate on that for a moment, uh, if you hold down the left mouse button to move while you're rolling, you actually roll faster than if you roll using any other kind of control scheme. So uh, we're going to just be passively taking advantage of that to go fast. Yep. So that was the first little area done. Um... Now, this room is where things are probably kind of the most difficult. Um, got a bunch of fighting to do in here. Um, yeah, so for the most part, most runs of Bastion are not super combat heavy, but uh, this one being so short and being forced to do the Soul Regret, where you have not the best weapons and just not a lot of options, it is a little more intense uh, combat-wise. So, uh, gotta darn, kill we'll all the boxes. Yeah, gotta kill a wave of boxes here, and then there's going to be a wave of uh, squirts, just More little squirts enemies that pop out of the ground. And he's going to have to kill all but two of those in order to advance to the wharf district. So, that just involves trying to group them up, hit them with the hammer as much as you can, and then getting in some shots, some aimed shots with the fang repeater. Uh, once you get them down to kind of low numbers, a good look at things on his way down. Yep. Um, so he lands on top of a break. We're well. actually kind of already near the end of the run. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so very conveniently, the first level is uh, also the last level. Bad news is the aim for the 
Yeah. Uh, um, other thing is that, oh, okay, oh, I missed that. There we go. Um, I have um, the interact bound to the scroll wheel. So that's a thing to call out. Um, and that will be kind of big here in a second. Um, so the, oh, I fell through the floor. I was going too fast. Uh, <laughs> yep. It's so very easy to go too fast in this game. The big thing that separates true any percent from um, any percent no MS uh, is the the MS part um, is the menu storage, um, which you'll see here in a second. But basically, it allows me to uh, duplicate items by pulling up the m menu and being able to interact with the game still behind the menu, uh, which means I'm just going to duplicate. Um, all of the keys that I need to beat the game um, right here at the first key. Yep, so, so so these cores are the key item you need to progress the story and normally pick up roughly one per level, but uh, the game finishes as soon as you put 14 cores in the monument, and if you know, if you play this game, you know there are shards also, those are just cores that look different. Sure. So and I just picked up all 14 of them. Yeah, exactly. So C just has enough cores to finish the game right now. All that's left is to do a little dialogue glitch here in order to... Uh, well, yeah, I just messed up a roll, I think. But uh, be able to put the cores in as quickly as possible. And once 14 go in, you go to the heart of the Bastion and finish the game. So a little bit of a flashing light warning here. Um, Putting in 14 cores basically at once makes the game act a little funny, so we're going to get some pretty bright screen flashes. But we can yeah, listen to music. Yeah, and kind of interestingly, uh, there's also a little a potential sound warning when he puts in the last few cores, because once you put in 14, you just keep putting them in, basically, <laughs> if you keep scrolling, so it can get kind of loud. Yeah. And I have an unlocked scroll wheel, so I'm just... God. It's going. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah, you know, um, as far as story goes, you know, we've got Rux, we're gonna, Z is just gonna kinda show up at the end, you know, so, oh god, you actually did it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, and we can only pick the restoration ending to restore the Bastion and basically put everything back the way it was, uh, because the evacuation ending is connected to the Hidebound Journal that you get in Prosper Bluff, which is a level that does not exist in this run. We can tell you how to work this thing if you got any questions. Yeah, hopefully you only like the first level of this game because we're done. Time. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Uh... Oh. <laughs> but now we so we did this so quickly so that we could get to the best song for the music night, which is the credit music. No matter what happens. Yeah, so enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's Bastion. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna take us back to a better time. We're just grooving in the music a little bit before we start doing shoutouts, just because, you know, it's so good. It's music night. Yeah, I think every one of my PBs of this game, I, like, you know, recorded the run and then also recorded the entire credits because the music's so good, um, which meant that the credits were actually longer than the run. <laughs> Well, so while we're listening to the music, do you have any shoutouts yourself, C? We're coming home. Yeah, um, so, I mean, check out this game. Check out this community. Um, this is one of those runs that is just like, anyone can, anyone can bastion any percent. Um, it's kind of like Strider. Like, you can pick it up in half an hour. Um, maybe not quite at, you know, the five minute level, but it's, I mean, it's a super fun run, super easy to pick up and learn. Um, there are a lot of really cool other categories that, you know, actually play the video game. Um, Primorix, for example, plays all story levels. So, you know, that actually plays all of the story levels. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's great. It's such a great game and all the speedruns are fantastic for it. 
Uh, yeah, and the thing I like about it is there's pretty like pretty much whatever length of run you want, there's a category for it just about. You've got the five minute any percent, you've got about a 15 minute run, 45 minutes or so, and some longer ones that can take more like an hour. So, you know, a lot of variety depending on what you're looking to get out of it. Yep, absolutely. And you get to listen to this at the end of every run, so that's good. Yeah, I'm also using this time to do a little bit of setup for the next run, because we've got kind of a mini relay going, so... Yeah, it's going to be fun. Nice, yeah. Um, and you can find... Uh, you can find, you know, the Discord and stuff all on speedrun.com. Um, the community's great. Uh, you know, everyone's going to be there ready to help you with whatever category it is you want to run. Um, it's a great like 12 hour challenge game if you're into that sort of thing. Um, some of the other categories, uh, this one is, you don't need 12 hours to learn this, this run, but um, yeah. So where can people find you two? Well, you can find me on uh, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, uh, just a C average on all of those things. Um, yep. From Oryx? Yeah, uh, mainly uh, Twitch. You know, I'm kind of on and off when I stream, but uh, you know, if I'm really in a grind, you'll find me streaming whatever run on Twitch m most nights when I'm doing that. Uh, I have a Twitter. It's just at Primorix, uh, same spelling, but I don't use it a ton anymore. But I certainly would be willing to talk to people there and uh, on Discord as well. I'll be in the discords for uh, Ori and Bastion and a few other games as well. Uh, definitely willing to help. Okay. Well, the the primary credits music is over, so I think we've vamped enough time there to let people listen to it. Sure. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get set up for the final uh, runs of the night. Because what we've got for Necrodancer when we approach the community, they wanted to do story mode, which is going through all four of the story characters. But they didn't want to do it with one runner. And we've got four different runners who are going to play the four different story characters with all four different soundtracks while they play. So kind of showing off Necrodancer, all of the soundtracks, and a couple different runners as we go. It'll be a lot of fun, so stay tuned. If you haven't seen the Necrodancer speedruns, they can be quite speedy. And it'll be a lot of fun. So we'll be back in just a few minutes with that. And of course, we'll be playing some ads during the break. We'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing. But we're going to get set up for that. Might take a few more minutes because I have to get four streams prepped. So stay tuned. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Community Spotlight. We've got our good music edition, hype music, like Cat Jam. I, I don't know. We've been changing the thing every time. Do you have any suggestions, Elad? What would we, we call it? I've been really digging the Cat Jam. Cat Jam Edition? Okay, let's go I, for I, Yeah, I second the Cat Jam. All right, so Cat Jam Edition <laughs> it is for this one. Uh, we've got Crypt of the Necrodancer. We're going to be doing two, four different uh, campaigns of the four story characters with four different runners. And uh, I think I misspoke. I, it's not all of the soundtracks, just four different ones, right? That's correct. Yeah, there is quite a few um, brief stories that Danny B wrote it, and then a bunch of people were like, holy cow, we need to cover it. And then they were like, holy cow, we need to put these in the game. And then they did <laughs> Danny B just okay. being too good. Everybody wanted to join the party. <laughs> yeah. The tragedy of it, we just realized, is that Danny B will not be one of the soundtracks. Oh, no. <laughs> he wrote the whole thing. And it's going to be just essentially covers. Yeah. So we're going to be doing Chipzel, then Family Jewels, then A Rival, then Vert. Uh, Vert of Shovel Knight fame. Um, and the others of various other fames. It's good stuff. We could talk about the music a little more this time around than we normally do, um, since that's the whole point of this. But yeah, very excited. Is there anything else you want to go over before we get started? Or should we cue Squigga to get us started? Um, I think the only thing we'll say is uh, we are super honored to be here. Uh, we love GDQ, and we're so lucky that uh, we've been on as many times as we have. And this particular run is something that we've talked a lot about in the community because we think it's a really neat idea. Story mode is four characters, and so having four different runners, we have, like, a, there is a lot of runners in the community. So being able to um, highlight 
just four of them even is really awesome. And uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe relay race sometime. <laughs> Eight runners. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, so uh, we'll talk about the game mechanics just a little bit. Unfortunately, the first character is the most complicated. So once we bash through that, though, uh, we'll make sure to listen to some. We'll get the cat jams going. Hell yeah. All right, I'm going to cue Squega with the countdown here. My countdown is not going to be in sync with the stream because delay and everything. So we'll just get started here. And then you'll see Squega get started shortly afterwards. No problem. All right, and here we go. So, uh, Chris, do you want to get us started on what is uh, <laughs> Necrodancer? What is Necrodancer? Sure, yeah. So this is a rhythm-based roguelike game where you have to move to the beat. So you see at the bottom of the screen there are those beat bars, and uh, in time with this great music that we're all getting to hear. Um, so each, your character and uh, the enemies all move according to that beat. Um, so that's kind of the main thing that we're that's happening in this game. We are playing as the character Nocturna, which is uh, first up in story mode, and she's got a bit of an interesting um, mechanic where you can see on the right-hand corner uh, one of our spell slots is taken into uh, being able to turn into a bat. So she can uh, swap over into bat form, doing four damage, but you lose access to all your items, so you don't have any armor any uh other spells or items that sort of literally thing. yeah everything is gone everything is gone even your so if you had a, a torch or a map those items are all gone um as a trade-off so you could see we just swapped into that that from there and when you turn back you you take half a heart of damage but you can regenerate your health while you're in that form by killing enemies yeah it's a vampire bat probably yeah <laughs> yeah, and so um, it does do four damage when you're the bat mode and you have flying, and you can also see all the enemies on the floor, but uh, otherwise you are pretty squishy. Now, what's extra good about this uh, character is if you die by losing all your hearts, you turn into bat form. So you can't die from this nocturna form. You have to uh, lose all your hearts in bat form, which of course, if you get hit in a bat form, then you're at half a heart. If you get hit again, you die. And so hopefully we won't see that. Um, this character is the DLC character, so um, this character wasn't in the original story mode. The original story mode was the next three characters we're going to see, but the story was a prequel. Sorry, the DLC was a prequel. So we are going to see uh, Nocturna first. Um, we've turned off the cutscenes, but there are a whole <laughs> bunch of cutscenes that actually explain the story and why these, these four characters are the story characters. Um, but you know, And why they are in this particular order as well. Exactly. Yeah, they are in a very particular order for uh, for the story reasons. Hand wave, hand wave. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I guess we can start to kind of talk about what's actually going on in this uh, run. So with Necrodancer in the DLC, you have five zones to get through, and Spoo or uh, sorry, Squega is just finishing the first zone here and about to get down to zone two, which has some of the finest music in the, uh, in the game, in my opinion. Uh, that opinion is greatly contested by pretty much the whole community. It's hard. <laughs> nobody really knows <laughs> where the best music is. A lot of people say Zone 4, uh, which does have excellent music. Well, maybe the whole game is just... On the soundtrack that you're using as well? Like... Um, there are certainly parts of certain soundtracks that I prefer. This is a little bit dangerous, Ooh, but thanks. using the bat form, so the bat does do 4 damage. So, um... What Squega just did there was uh, this particular special shop is a Shriner, and um, Shrines have special functions. If you bomb them, they give you items. That's what Squega did. He actually bombed everything, but there's a penalty to doing that, which is where you have to fa face three of the worst enemies in the game, the dragons. Um, but of course, we have trained professionals here who can certainly handle all the dragons that come at them. I I'm sure if you've played this game, you've probably felt the wrath of the dragons, especially the red dragon. Um, the dragons can be quite brutal in this game, but, um, yes, Swag has got a few hours. Professional <laughs> dragon wranglers. Yeah, dranglers. Exactly. And um, you can see here also... as... Sorry, go um, ahead, you're gonna say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, you I can see here as well, we just walked through this purple room, which might look a little out of place in this, uh, green zone too, and that's because, uh, Nocturna, Nocturna has, a uh, zone bleed, so what that means is, um, that purple room represents zone 5, um, with that electric wire on the ground, and so there's um, enemies that are usually only found in that zone with other characters, but at, with Nocturna, she's having to deal with those orcs, these um, 
beholders and uh, evil skull eyes. Evil we eyes. Be sued by uh, oh. Wizards of the Coast now. <laughs> I couldn't remember. You know, I couldn't remember what they were actually called, and I think that happens a lot. The, the community has so many like uh, oh, pet names, me I guess, already. for a lot of these enemies that I don't know if, if I could really say off the top of my head what their their true name is. You know, I think the honest truth why those zone fives are in all the zones is because I think the, so the devs are very aware of how difficult this game is and they really wanted to make sure people saw the new content when the DLC <laughs> dropped. So it's like, ah, you get to see the wire right away. That may not be true. I don't know. <laughs> but this okay. game is hard. Don't be fooled by, you know, we were breezing through into zone three, um, but you know, a lot of people, even myself included, I remember it took me a very long time to even clear zone one. <laughs> feel like the first cadence clear, you're looking at like minimum 30 hours of the game and probably some people up over 100 before getting it. It can be very, very punishing. It's a very tricky game, but it feels so good once you start to get get it under your fingers. And one of the nice things too, when you're when you're trying to grind through and figure out how these enemy patterns move and, and what's going on, is you have this great soundtrack to listen to. And so I, that was what the, actually what drew me to the game, and, and I ended up buying it because I like the music so much. So of course that's um, a big plus and oh, a nice uh, obsidian rapier pickup from that little uh, trap there. Yeah, so the we've got a great room. weapon. Yeah, this is one of the best weapons in the game. Um, now, I guess just real quick about the mechanics of it, if you're not familiar. So this game actually only requires you to use four buttons, up, down, left, right, and that's it. And so um, like a lot of the classic rogue, proper rogue likes, you can move or move into enemies. And when you move into an enemy, you attack. Now each weapon has an attack radius. So something like the rapier, is going to have an attack radius where you will lunge if they're two away from you, like we're just seeing there against that uh, deviled egg, or um, or you will uh, attack up close like a dagger if they're up close. When you do the lunge, you also do double damage, which is part of why the rapiers are so strong. And they're fast because you can constantly be lunging ABL, always be lunging, and you can uh, you can go super fast doing that. So. <laughs> Like the Freddy and Merchant re remixes on these different soundtracks as well. So good. Yeah, we always joke that that's Danny B actually singing, and he always corrects us that it's not. It's a plugin for whatever. <laughs> Although there that. was, I, I don't think any of our racers are using it, but there is an alternative shopkeeper that you can set for uh, Nicholas Douse. Oh, we're taking a few hits here. Yeah, a little Where, spicy, there, but he's got was armor for days. A real person who sang along with Freddy's. Uh, music, like the Freddy voice lines in this game, and put it on YouTube, and it, it was so amazing that they said, "Hey, do you want to do this for real, and we'll put you in the game?" Yeah, it's the it's the Necker Dancer story. We just said that about you know Family Jewels covering Danny B's, and then Danny B saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. "Let's put it in the game." <laughs> well, yeah, Nicholas Douse did the same thing. He covered it on YouTube. They were like, "Holy cow, that's amazing!" And now you're in the game. And they even made a little sprite for him, which is delightful. Oh, we do have Douse. I didn't see if... Uh, oh, yeah, Squega plays with Douse. That's right. I'm really curious if Elad's going to get to talk about his favorite de Dead Ringer strategy today at all. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what Dead Ringer strategy we get for... Uh, it'll only be featured from Doof because Dead Ringer is only part of the Cadence story. Uh, we do see Dead Ringer a lot because Cadence is the main character and the one that we typically race mm -hmm. in Condor. But uh, yeah, we'll... We'll see what Goof goes for. Uh, we'll get to goof, see some of the other story bosses fun. in the rest of these runs here, because each of these, um, each of these characters has a unique story uh, boss so that you won't see in any of the other um, characters. Well, sort That's of, right. but, or and variation. The other, the other <laughs> oh, and speaking of good bosses, let's give a good listen to this one. This one's got some really nice uh, music. This is one of my game. favorite uh, sound song, uh, songs. I know some people really prefer the conduct over Frankenstein, but I really like Oh, nice. Using the red dragon to kill him. And of course, uh, puns aplenty. That was Frankensteinway for our piano aficionados out there. Steinway is a fancy piano. I guess for our non-piano aficionados. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is the final boss here. This is the conductor. Uh, the story is something, something. This conductor is building monsters with magical instruments you're gonna break them 
Uh, it's using a lot of the electricity mechanic that we saw uh, featured in the DLC. And there's two phases. This is the end of the first one. Now there's these batteries, and you have to depower the batteries by using the. Uh, oh, very nice. We got some by nice bombing them. Bomb. <laughs> Never mind. That's, You're supposed with, to. Well, with Nocturna, you were looking for bombs. Um, and got time. <laughs> and that's, and that's so that's exactly a why. <laughs> solid run there. 923, very safe. And we're going to move right into Cadence. So this is Royal Goof uh, getting tagged in, and we're going to see Goof start any moment now. Now, when you typically play story mode, you will uh, play each character, like, it'll immediately start Cadence. Um, but, of course, we're doing multiple. Or it'll immediately races. go into the first cutscene of Cadence, into Cadence, if you have cutscenes yeah. on. Cutscenes, yeah. Gotta have All those right. cutscenes for that first clear. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, it's true. You gotta see the, what's so special about golden loot. Um, so, picking up some early sunglasses. This is a little spicy. Now, Squega's build was so oh, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Darkness Minotaur, no Tricky. If we had been able to take a step back, though, that's Mr. Cooling Man coming to yeah. say hello. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna be heading in for this, and yeah, we're gonna be picking up a two damage golden axe. This is a really Ooh. solid start, actually. We're gonna and pick up those glass those slippies. Got the cookies. Looking good. Now the axe is the best weapon in the game. Weapon type. It does a lunge similar to the rapier. Oh, we're gonna take trap doors. We're going fast. Um, now with the sunglasses, you can see all the enemies are shadowed out. Um, it's purely graphical, but it really does sort of uh, mess you up sometimes. It can get re real tricky. Um, yeah, so and... you can see the different eye colors is, is really the main way that you can tell um, what type of enemy it is, like uh, with like one health, two health, three health sort of thing. Right. And uh, so the axe has a lunge attack, but it also lunges... Um, the three tiles where you're lunging. It does this big axe attack. This is really scary. That's a red dragon. And we're going to see ourselves a leprechaun here. Oh, but we... Maybe. Well, well, we can Run away, leprechaun. Recover it we with this axe. Yeah. yeah, the axe makes things everything easy. Don't worry about me. So, I'm just oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, so just to make it even harder to watch, we've got the sunglasses and Goof took a Shrine of Darkness. Now, um, for many people oh, for nice starting out with this game kill. the shrine nice of darkness is kill. really really uh hard to use but what it does is it gives you a full map oh my God. and it gives you a ring of darkness which goof's actually gonna hang on to here so the ring of darkness gives you this really hard uh sort of zoomed in uh viewing um but it also allows you to steal from oh shots. it was polka was it polka no way oh my god so what are if what chad is freaking out about and that is what it was is is there is when you're running family um jewels specifically the family jewel soundtrack you have a very small chance and i don't know what it actually is but it's very small to get very the polka small. version of it so it's incredibly rare point. and the fact that we got that that is really really exciting um, oh my goodness that's insane <laughs> that's, it only so that's works a, that's with an easter egg it only works yeah. if you have family jewels uh, it only works with family on, jewels. which is what we have with uh oh. goofs run right there and the rng for these two runs so far is incredible oh, oops oh. there we go that's okay all set up <laughs> look over here okay so um <laughs> that's okay so yeah, so um, finding that heavy plate, it's the best armor. Um, there's a blast helm. All of these items are so So this is why good. in that boss chest, Goof had a ring swap back in uh, the death metal polka um, of a ring of gold, which is not a great ring at all. Um, we kept this uh, shadow's ring, so we've been able to steal from all these shops to get all these great items. So now our build is really uh, great. And most of these uh, speedrunners are very comfortable running this darkness um, and not too worried about swapping it off compared to newer players or casual players, it's it's a lot trickier. To, well, I mean, even myself, I, <laughs> I, I participate in our races and uh, darkness is, is spooky. It can be but spooky. we've got ourselves a, a really ring solid um, here. build. No ring swap. Gonna take the fireball tome though, so it can shoot three fireballs out. Not bad. We're moving into uh, Zone 3, which has the Hot and Cold soundtrack, so depending on which half of the floor you're on is the music you get to hear, which is pretty cool. Um, and if we haven't mentioned it enough yet, this is the Family Jewels soundtrack. This was the original second soundtrack, uh, Family Jewels from YouTube and just General Awesomeness fame. Um, decided to cover it and was the first soundtrack introduced into uh, the game. And then from there, we saw uh, all the other ones get added in, arrival, vert, and all that good stuff. Um, and this is, of course, in the style of Family Jewels, so it's metal-esque. And it's the official one of Aria. 
Uh, but they didn't do it in the proper way. In the proper, each soundtrack is specific to a character. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the reason that that wasn't done, even though it is default on Aria, is because there is a bit of a beat um, issue. There so he goes. there, that's a good ring we want. So we got a Ring of War that's plus one damage with knockback, and on an axe, which is a lunge attack weapon, you can just keep on knocking back. This is an incredibly strong build, and I anticipate this is going to be a rather fast run. Group will probably start to pick up the pace quite a bit as we push through the last few floors. Picking up a bonus spell. Darkness Ogre, it's always sweet. <laughs> <Classic. laughs> I don't if you can see, the Ogre will raise that club and then stay raised until you come back into the aggro. There's that Telemonkey Goof, famously yeah. known for taking those Telemonkeys in zone 4. Yeah, so there out. are monkey enemies that will teleport you randomly somewhere, which could get you instantly dunked, except for this build is quite safe, but Goof it doesn't matter how safe or unsafe it is. We always take. Oh, them. there we, we go. go. Right, right into that exit room. Right into <laughs> right that exit. The room. Oh, the double telemonkey. You love to see it. Promise. That was awesome. So yeah, Goof doing what Goof does. Um, all of these racers are some of the finest necker dancers in uh, in the community. We're gonna see a, a bit of a glitch here. This is the uh, Ozuma special. Uh, someone named Ozuma came up with it. There's some weird bomb mechanics that allow you to do bomb damage to Konga. So he has 5 health there, so he is taken down by 4 health with while also bombing his uh, throne, which is part of the mechanics you have to get rid of his throne before you can kill him. And we found an instant trapdoor. This is an incredibly fast run right now for Goof. And we're already into zone 5. And we're, we're booting it. Yeah, we're just going through. We've got a lot of health, a lot of armor, so we can tank a lot of hits at this point um, as well. And the axe is so nice in, in zone five with these three wide hallways. Um, you can usually just kind of, with the war ring, just push forward and, and don't have to think too much. So it's and really, get, really powerful. To get our Canadianness into this cast a little bit, uh, just Zambonying all the way down. <laughs> and we're on to Dead Ringer. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we Great go. Great music. Let's see what he does. It's like easy left side scoots, but it might be a little late on it. Because he entered, he entered. Uh, oh, it's fine. Oh, okay. He entered right, so but the darkness might have was actually helpful um, entering right like that. And here he is, the necrodancing the, 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 himself. The, yeah, the guy. The, What's that on the game stage? Game. It is the golden loot. That's the golden loot. We'll start to see more about that. That that's the loot that the conductor made. It's super special. It has a strange attack radius, which we will see with Cadence for a moment here, and a whole bunch for our next uh, character, Melody. Um, we can talk about that once we get there. So the key here is you gotta hit the Necrodancer with the, the loot. Um, we get to the second phase really quick. You gotta get him off the stage first, but um, using bombs, you can do that no problem. And uh, this is gonna be a really, really fast, fast, not sub yeah. seven, but oh, we're gonna see a bad ending, I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Killing Cadence on the way down, GG. Yeah, that's I think what we that call counts. the bad ending where it, it takes a moment to... Uh... <laughs> that was fast. The timer's the still road. going. He might have pre-killed himself too fast, but we'll count it. We'll count it. We're going to move on. It has to show it. It'll show a oh, screen it either way, even if you died. So there it is. It's the bad ending. Takes Dorian a little bit longer to walk down those stairs. Yeah, it's his grief Cadence slowing him down. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man. Why'd you do that, Cadence? <laughs> All right, now we're going to swap on over to Melody. Yeah, and this is our pal uh, Dash doing this run. Um, ooh, and instantly dying. That's okay. That's fine. Just got it. We got to get one death in. It's all good. Now, if this was actually story mode, a death there sends you all the way back to Nocturna. We opted not to go with that for the sake of <laughs> marathon safety, so to speak. Um, but there are some things that make this character in fact, I will say that um, as you go through the story, the characters get harder and harder. This character is very fun, but you can't get any different weapons. You've only got the gold loot, and you may notice the number of heart containers is only two. So a lot of enemies can one-shot you early. Um, oh, we lost the feed. That's back. No worries. Uh, but we did just find oh, a that's first really heart. Nice. And we'll be able to heal uh, that up with this heal spell to get turn it into a uh, red heart and some and armor. Yeah, because there are no weapons in the black chests, because this character's item pool has no weapons, uh, Dash is going to be getting some armor there, so... And, uh, yeah, definitely want to leave some space for this music. This is uh, A Rival, one of my favorite soundtracks. Really, really good. Oops, getting Oops. a little bit tangled. It's all good. We got a heal spell early, which is really nice. 
And there's a glitch where you take no damage on the exit stairs. So anytime you're next to the exit stairs, you can just jump on them. Even if you're getting wailed on by a whole bunch of enemies, no big deal. But that also applies to blood magic. So you can use your spells on the stairs without the penalty of the blood magic. And so with the heal spell specifically, you can use it on the stairs and, um, and you can heal up for free. Even if you just use it, it's pretty awesome. Looks like we might have ourselves a trap door here. Now, I'm going to be really curious for Tissimol, the wrapping mole boss. This is a DLC boss. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let Mega Man speak for himself. <laughs> usually you never get to quite hear him start <laughs> rapping. Yeah, you usually get the unholy mole. <laughs> or... <usually> <laughs> Ooh, there we go. So yeah, again, that, that black chest giving us another armor upgrade since we aren't getting any of the other usual items. Yeah, so there is uh, two items in particular that you are always looking for with Melody. One is armor, and that's what we've got here with the plate mail. Yeah, like Chris said, when you check the black chest, you're going to get armor probably. Um, when you check it in the boss, it's going to be a good one usually. And then we have uh, the other thing you're looking for is a particular headgear called the Miner's Cap. Now what that does is it allows you to um, dig walls automatically. And so it with this character that attacks, well, we should talk about the attack range, but oh, look at that armor there. But no way of getting it, unless this is a dragon. There's something stomping on the other side of that wall, but I think it's like a nightmare. Be. Honestly, the, that armor is an upgrade, but it's with the plate mail that we have right now for the Squega suit, as we call it, after our, our first runner. <laughs> yes, yeah, Squega. Um, it, it only gives you an extra half a heart. It's, it's not going to be worth the effort to try and, and solve that. Um, yeah. Okay, Dash missing a missing a heal there. So should try and make sure to snag those, but that's okay. Not going to do that enemy arena. Those items Not weren't particularly good. Uh, but yeah, very quickly, I'm going to talk about how the loot actually works. So it attacks as you move, and it attacks um, sort of on your flank, the horizontal, like beside you, as well as two spaces in front of you and one space behind you. It does not attack... The way you can think of it is it attacks every direction except for where your dagger would attack if you had one. So the main complication of this character is switching from a character that can attack at dagger range, which is every other weapon, to a weapon that can't. And it so can if you saw, like, tricky. we just fist bumped that bat that was on the stairs, um, because if you walk into an enemy, you're not you're not attacking. Okay, and here's Deep Blues, a chest set that attacks you. Good stuff. Kill all the pieces. The king comes after you. It's all that's left. There it is. Flawless victory. check um now purple is particularly good purple uh chests for for melody because you can get uh attacking so you can only ever do one damage with your weapon so it's really great to get um to get damaging spells so this pulse spell does an x a giant x around you uh that does uh five damage if it hits an enemy so it's really really strong considering you can only do one damage with your with your loot and I will say this character, again, is super fun to play. Uh, once you start to really push it, and you can just like kind of glide through the crowds uh, doing damage on the way, it's it's really fun. Like PB attempts of this character, it can be a delight. Another fun sort of musical um, note of this nice game that I don't think we've highlighted is that this Zone 3, which we're now just leaving, I always think of it as we're leaving Zone 3, it actually has two different sides to it. So there's a Zone 3 hot and a Zone 3 cold, and there uh, the music is um, changes when you walk between the two different sides of, of the Zone 3. Um, yeah, somewhat cool. reflecting the temperature. Yeah. I think actually Family Jewels was, if I'm not mistaken, was tagged in to do the hot side because of, you know, electric guitars and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then uh, went the whole the whole way with the uh, soundtrack, but yeah, very cool. Not going to be taking too many telemonkeys. They're pretty dangerous with Melody because if you're fully surrounded, oh, and a very nice distance pulse there on the mummy. Oh, um, confused. But... Oh, 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 oh. Spicy. Oh. Spicy. Oh, oh my god. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're getting okay. surrounded. We're getting surrounded. We like, we're just saying, so when don't you're on Melody, if you get completely surrounded by enemies, if you don't have a bomb to drop, and if you don't have the ability to um, outlast that bomb, uh, you're, that's it. That's all. Uh, okay, so we can breathe. <laughs> we're oh, okay that was now. scary. I don't that even so know this scary. game that well, and I was scared. It's super scary, yeah. Uh, I'm glad that that translates, because it was scary. Now, I'm going to keep this, uh, this hat 
the hat that he's uh, that Dash has right now is um, allowing him to see what enemies are on the other side of the um, wall, which is actually really useful because currently he does not have a torch. If you don't have a torch, you could just open a wall and surprise there's a Minotaur there about to jump in your face. So um, that's probably a wise choice to keep him. Not the headgear he's looking for, but um, the headgear he has. <laughs> Okay, there comes the dragon, and see that pulse is just incredibly useful for killing these mini-bosses, which all have a lot more health than the normal enemies, and oh, gotta get oh to the exit. Oh my gosh, get out. Okay, <laughs> nice bomb trap. Oh, but we... We're down, we're down to half health, we're gotta get those to heals. Fight. This is good. This is, I like it. Keep it up, Dash, you're doing great. <laughs> and so this is the final um, zone boss, and then of course we'll have the final boss, uh, which will be Necrodancer Take-Two. And with this pulse, we should be able to get a nice, yeah, very nice, hit on Coral Rift. A giant bass guitar octopus <laughs> with instruments and its tentacles, because why not? Might be seeing a red pick up here. I think red would be wise, yeah. Gonna get a protection charm, so that's 0.5 protection. So now it's as if Dash had that heavy plate armor. And uh, with the circlet, we're gonna be able to see um, where the boss is. And you can see there's that dragon, that's the mini boss. And uh, you're always searching for a mini boss on each floor. Uh, watch out, that guy hurts if he stomps you. But we're looking real nice now. Yeah, with our heart containers up and this armor, um, we're pretty solid. And the, the health regen. Zone 5 is nice because of the amount of with this electrical wire uh, zapping all the enemies in it. You know, Melody does still get that benefit if we're on the wire, which is pretty, pretty strong. Um, you're able to regen that spell cooldown quite quickly. Yeah. Able to stay at uh, recover any health that we might end up losing. Yeah, it turns out zone five is actually a little easier than zone four, and we're all just kind of okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's okay. Zone five is really fun. Get on the wire, kill all the enemies. It's a good time. We're on it's a little bit of an adventure here. Really, uh, it's really satisfying, like when there's a back closet and you can oh, get the, up. all of them at once. Yeah. <laughs> really nice spell uses again on these earth dragons, which have eight health. Yeah, they got a lot of health. It's a lot of health. Okay, oh this is... Oh my god! This is, this is spicy! Oh god. Okay. That was, that was a close to a full was, surround there. Oh my god, almost a full surround. That but we're on the Necrodancer, bad. and we're at full health. It's all good. We're okay. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, this is... Uh, so this fight back. is designed... Yeah, he's back! Where'd he come from? I don't know. I thought he... He went... We should kill him! What's happening? Now <laughs> he should be dead. <laughs> so, um, just to add a little tense to this uh, one, you'll see that the walls close in, so not for the claustrophobic. <laughs> you gotta kill him before they all close in. He gets this little squad. Uh, you gotta kill his squad so that you can knock him into the lava. Surely lava will kill the Necrodancer. Surely. I don't know why he put this in his uh, temple. What was he thinking? Thing, or whatever, this in his room. Maybe if he had drained that lava bath, then <laughs> things would be a little bit differently. Yeah, but you we just are get knocked here, into the stairs. Done, just done with the Necrodancer. Yeah, Two. and and we are on our fourth and final character. This character is incredibly difficult. Let me see. We got the uh, cursor, the cursor uh, familiar. There. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, and there's that back closet. There now you you're go. noticing immediately. Wait a minute. How did Spooty get to the last floor um, like right away? Well, something, something story, and Arya is trying to escape the crypt. So you start and you do something called zone reversal which is where you start in zone five and work your way up to zone one. Now this character is nice pretty value. notorious. There was a time when it was the hardest character in the game. And uh, it is quite a, oh, we're gonna milk this leprechaun, very nice. Get some extra gold out of it. And uh, probably go into that, yeah, into this glass shop and buy out the armor. And we're gonna do a throw, oh, nice. buying the glass armor to save themselves. So a few things about Arya. Uh, you can't get anything better than a base dagger. So that makes Arya hard. Uh, you start at half a heart and you can't get any more heart containers. So all you have is that potion. Uh, that makes Arya hard. But also, if you drop the beat, and that's by um, trying to dig something you can't dig, or just not hitting a button during the beat, you die. Or taking damage like even non-lethal damage so like things like monkeys um will grab you but you won't take any damage point. um but it'll cause your coin multiplier to uh go down so or taking like a trap door you uh, you know supposedly miss a beat um so if you don't have earn. any Ooh, nice use of those was that shurikens we had yeah we had the throwing stars so very that. nice we got a shield spell 
So there's a and lot of ways that you can just, your run can just end. Yeah, this character <laughs> dies very fast. Um, and uh, yeah, picking up the crystal shovel, that's a very rare item. It is uh, essentially a glass shovel that doesn't break when you get hit, so it can dig tier 3 walls. It's a very good shovel. It, as of the DLC, it is not the best shovel, but it's still quite good. And uh, we also have some damage up, an item that is rarely picked up on any other character except for Coda. It is the glass jaw. That doubles all your damage, um, so it takes all your damage into account and then doubles it. Um, right now, Spooty's only doing one damage, so it's now currently doing two damage. And we are on to Coral Rift. Um, we're gonna see a shield strat here. Yeah, so gonna use the shield to just get in there and get the start. A lot of the enemies have, uh, like, two phases. And so you can see you have to do that first phase of hitting him in the face. And then from there you can do your second phase. And a nice dagger throw. That so is a, a strat for quality, uh, Aria players. I was fixing something, but I didn't hear. Did you explain the downside of the gloss draw? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, and we have two. We got the other kind of last. So the last jaw is if you take any sort of, uh, if you take one hit, you will instantly die. And yeah. so, you know, that's a little bit scary or maybe a lot scary on every other character when, you know, if you just take half a heart of damage, you're instantly dead. But on Arya, you're going to die anyways to that same amount of damage. Yeah. So really you on this well character, there, there, there isn't technically a downside because that downside is already built into the character itself. And yep. now we've just picked up the uh, Karani Gi out of that black um, boss chest, which is another item, sort of uh, double your damage, um, but uh, also increase the damage you take. Uh, so it only damages or only doubles your weapon damage, um, as opposed to the jaw, which doubles all of your damage, um, and it doubles the amount of damage you take. So you, not a really great. Uh, take on most characters, but again, on Arya, you're not taking damage, so you're not planning on uh, <laughs> having those downsides affect you anyways. Scooty working hard to move these statues in the way of that telemage, and gonna blow it up and see what we get, and Ooh, oh, we've got nice. super good items. The wing boots, also another item, like the glass jaw and like the gi that are much better for Arya than they are for the other characters. So these floaty boots used to be amazing when you were getting them late in a uh, in a Necrodancer run, but uh, they negate the effect of the wire that is in Zone 5, and that wire, as we saw earlier, is really, really useful. But once you're past the wire on Arya, ah, grab them. They're good. And yeah, since so she gets them, the wire first thing, it's, it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Spooty scared yeah. the crap out of me there because I thought he was in a bad situation that just used the shield on the exact beat that he got attacked. I was like, oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. Spooty is very aware of all the situations. As a, as I'm sure many know, uh, he is a absolute master of uh, Coda, which in, uh, is three of the challenge characters combined, including Arya. So Arya is part of the challenge characters. So all the effects of Arya are also included in Coda, except Coda is also double speed. And so Spooty has to be super aware of everything that's going on at all times. And uh, yeah, clearly doing a good job of that. So a lot of confidence in Spooty's abilities to handle this. Isn't Koda the one that says on character select, like maybe not possible or something like Probably that? Impossible Probably impossible is what it says impossible. there. Which, because, you know, the de developers sort of thought, hey, well, um, maybe like, can somebody clear this? I don't know. Uh, they cleared, I think, was it, did Ryan do like zone one? And it was like, zone well, one, yeah. well, hopefully, and didn't know if somebody would be able to do it. And now here we are. Um, yeah, we have, I think, like 30 oh. clears. Oh, this is a little scary. So Spooty, I think, <laughs> slightly memeing here, uh, we are decided doing, to pick we the, have to. We got the, we got the, the silly funny, socks. Silly socks, not the yeah. funny, but silly socks. We've, we've swapped off our floaties that we were talking about earlier for these uh, boots of leaping, which um, you can toggle on and off, and you can see we're hopping um, over a tile every now and then. And these are really, really strong for, for speed, as you can imagine. Oh my god! Gosh, booty. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. He knows what he's a trained professional. You know, I try, I try. I have faith in you, Spooty, but it's always just so stressful to watch us on the side. Look at him playing with this blue so dragon, just no problem. The horizontal. Oh, we picked up a mana ring, so our shield is going to be going extra long um, compared to normal. Um, oh, and just handling taking handling that confusion just no fine. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. You can 
Um, also use these boots to stand still on this character if we just toggle them on and off um, yeah. instead of uh, buffering on the wall, which is, is pretty cool. Yeah, they're like a war drum a little bit. And yeah, just quickly on the Ring of Mana, so it does give you better additions of each spell that you have. So it's only a good ring if you have a spell, but Spooty has probably the best spell for Arya, the uh, shield spell, so it's now extra good. And there's another potion if he needs, but he doesn't need it. He's still got his first potion. He has currently been untouched, despite all the funny feet shenanigans. We do have one. Oh, I, I was going to say, we, we have taken one small touch from that orange armadillo earlier, but you'll see we swapped onto a different uh, uh, body item, um, uh, the heavy glass armor, um, which is sort of like glass armor, except it's it's got three pieces that so fall off when you get hit instead of one. So you can take three hits with this item. And so we've, we're showing a bit of leg with Arya there. So that's because we've taken Scandal. Uh, <laughs> we've taken there it is. Oh <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. Spooty biscuit. Come on now. What did he so find? These Ooh. items, this is the boots of lunging, or the funny feet, as people like to call them. And we'll see in a moment. I'm sure he'll show us um, why they're so crazy. I, as someone who's played nearly 2,000 hours of this game, I still can't use this item. I can't wrangle these boots, they're so, this is insane. So you leap four tiles ahead, and you do four damage when you hit some, when you lunge into somebody while doing it. Okay, now he's confused. <laughs> this is booty boots. <laughs> so they go way too fast, and when you're playing a character that if you mess up or drop the beat at all, is he oh, gonna- Oh, I've got one oh, He transmuted and he bombed it! it. <laughs> Spooty biscuit. <laughs> wow. So we're just this is just all the memes. All, all the things, yeah. So what that was was we we found that ring, which is a, a rare or well, it's pretty much the best ring in the game. Um, oh my. That, okay, that, he did take that, another hit. We're on to the bib. We still have our potion up. Yeah, he's got the bib. So more than just a little <laughs> leg now. Uh, yeah. So he found the best. So the Ring of Becoming is a ring with only downsides because if you get hit, you die. It's just like the glass jaw, except for it has only downsides unless you transmute it. And he has the, that book that he's holding on to, the transmute tomes. Oh my god. Dude, he's oh my way god. Too hard. Okay, he's got the shield. He's got the shield, but he's of course not going to use it. Why? Okay, oh, final boss of the game. And it's so basically he just bombed the, the best ring of the game, which is very rare to find and hard to get and that's such a big <laughs> joke and we've already blinked and it's over that's the golden loot oh yeah. my goodness so so surprise the loot actually turns into a giant monster and then you kill um, it <laughs> that run the that end run was so, <laughs> the end we did it so not done sorry what do you get when you transmute it what's the upside we got a little distracted yeah, yeah. there's too many things happening there all it's, at once it's hard to even tell you how many good things the ring of wonder has it You've gives got... you um faster spell cooldown it gives you plus two damage half a heart defense which doesn't matter for uh, aria and it gives you a heal every floor so it's like a ring and of region yeah is there anything else that might be it it has peace in it as well uh does it it gives you it gives it gives you discounts i think as well yeah yeah. It's got like all the other Top rings combined. It's, but yeah, it's basically a combination of every other ring, most of the other rings um, combined. So uh, it's really strong. I like how he <laughs> dropped the ring and then left. Like, didn't even look at the explosion. Uh -huh. yeah. You guys don't yeah. look at explosions. Exactly. Cool. I was just thinking that. Yeah, throw on the sunglasses and walk away. Yeah, didn't have sunglasses that run, but uh, definitely could have put those on. Um, that was. That was an excellent way to cap it off. What a fantastic relay. Really excellent. Just the one really early death for uh, for Melody, but otherwise a flawless run. Um, the first two runs were very safe. The third one was a little spicy. Uh, and this one was... It was full of memes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was extra spicy. I feel like well Spooty done, was trying to scare us on purpose in that run. <laughs> I'm sure he was. <laughs> I'm, I'm positive of it. Yeah, um, I mean, he did a lot of choices that made you go faster. I think mm -hmm. keeping the Ring of Mana was totally fine in that situation because it does give you a better shield than the Ring of Wonder. Um, and you, and you, there's some benefits from Ring of Wonder you don't get, like the armor doesn't matter, the heals don't matter. So the Ring of Wonder is slightly worse for Arya, uh, but it's still a really good ring that he bombed. <laughs> so, and we uh, were moving into like Zone 1 too, which is... Uh relatively easier compared to uh yes starting we're going reverse yeah. so asking if he annoyed chat by 
blowing up, <laughs> blowing up wonder. wonder. I'm sure he did. I'm sure there was a lot of people cringing when that happened. I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I totally approve. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, I mean, didn't have to bomb it, but it was the right choice not to take it, in my opinion. So that's really cool. <laughs> and bomb is uh, just the style points, like the dagger throw. We're all about, I'm, a, or I'm all about style points when I'm watching. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The so, races. <laughs> well, while we're wrapping up, I, I know you all as a community do a lot of racing and showcasing of this game. Do you want to plug that real quick? Sure do. Yeah, we uh, have been running Condor for, I don't know, I should do the math sometime, but like four plus years. Uh, it's been going on. We often do it almost every week. Uh, we have these big seasons with prize money, and it's a good time for like the really top tier racers, but everyone's invited. And uh, this week, we're actually running Conduit, which is our junior league. So it's going to be featuring all of our, uh, the new people to the community. We actually put people in with the worst PBs. And it sounds like it wouldn't be that fun, but trust me and trust Chris, because Chris often co-hosts with me on Conduit, and mm -hmm. it's a good time. Right, Chris? It is. It's a great time. Um, yeah. And we're always happy to have new people joining in the community and, you know, getting your feet wet with racing. It's it's really fun to to play this game and to race this game. Yeah, so we're going to be doing a Conduit this week. Uh, there's actually a week long, so just follow Necrodancer on Twitch and you'll be able to see all the races pop up. They get commentated by random members of the community. And then on Saturdays, I host it at 2 p.m. Eastern on my channel. And uh, if you go to condor.live, you'll get all the information in the about... Chat there. Yeah, we can join our Discord um, community to get updates with future events there. You can um, buy the game. I think there's a link on that website as well, which it is on sale right now. Um, oh. Just for the next little bit, I think, for the that Black Friday weekend, it's 80% oh, off. Cyber Monday, so yeah. for a couple bucks, you can pick up this game and it's just a ton of fun. Super you know, every, We've got this huge community, many people with thousands of hours <laughs> and, and it's just got such replayability i think you know but keep in mind what you just saw is not going to be re reproduced when you load up this game for the first time but it's great yeah. i would definitely it's a tough encourage game you to and i will just up. really quickly um we do have after that we're, we're doing puzzdor which is going to be like what we're seeing spooty do here you can make your own puzzles in this game and or your own levels and so we do an event where we um <laughs> this is something that's pretty doing. Uh, we do an event where we uh, where we have people make puzzles and then other people try and do them, and that's that's going to be the next uh, that's going to be the next event after this week. And after that, we're going to do festive door, where everyone uh, is going to be. Um... Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, which is going to be a fun um, meme tacular event where we just play this game in all kinds of super fun ways and there's actually um we're starting to get some like networking abilities to play the game with like co-op across the internet so uh there's lots of weird and interesting stuff that the modding community is doing so it's all um it's all gravy it's super fun that we're here again and thank you so much real for yeah uh, i can bringing give us in i can give a it. quick agreement to elad about conduit conduit's fun especially like whenever i've tuned into it it's fun to track people like as they get, get noticeably better throughout the tournament mm -hmm. like that's actually mm -hmm. really fun for me to watch personally yeah and and the big prize for winning conduit uh we didn't mention before is you get banned from it because you're too good so <laughs> there's a big honor in the community to be banned from conduit and then you're you've graduated there's a little graduation letter we send you and uh send you on the internet and then you um <laughs> not in real life and then you uh then you're you're not allowed back in but you do get to participate i mean anyone gets to participate in our condor events but mm -hmm. you know it's a bit of an honor it's a good time so anyways uh they were massively under time fantastic job from all four racers i hope everyone in chat enjoyed it as much as i did um because that was that was great so thanks again uh, yeah make sure you check out all the runners who participated in that that was um squigga royal goof it's me, Dash, and Spooty Biscuit, all fantastic uh, speedrunners of this game. Yeah, and they all stream fairly regularly, so they're all worth uh, following for sure. Uh, various games, um, but certainly uh, a decent amount of Necrodancer. So yeah, they're awesome, awesome people. And thanks to them for uh, coming out and doing this. Yeah, and I think we're going to start wrapping up there. Thank you, Elad and Chris, for taking us through Necrodancer. It was fun having you here. Yeah, Thank thanks you. so much for having us. Always a pleasure to talk about this game. <laughs> yeah, it, it is always fun when you all are here on the show. But uh, just big thank you to everyone who was here today. We had uh, Blupa, Blupa doing um, 
Deltarune, we had Kurarium with uh, Celeste. We had Oryx with V, 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 Primorix, Bastion, Sea Average on, or er, Primorix on Ori and Sea Average on Bastion. A lot of wonderful people. If you missed any of those runs, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, it should be up within about a day or so is usually the timing it takes for it to go up on our channel. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you tune in tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Random Number Generation. It's a show about randomizers, randomizer community. Sometimes they get some devs on to talk about stuff as well. It's a lot of fun. Hosted by Skybill starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And of course, this weekend, we've got West Coast Weekend uh, starting noon Pacific every day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Just showing off some West Coast speedrunners having fun with speedruns. So we'll see you for more wonderful hotfix content. But besides that, we're going to go take a quick break. We're going to play a few ads and they're going to raid someone. So if you want to hang out and root somebody on while they're doing some speedruns, we'll send you in somebody else's direction. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow.